One. And turn this to me, uh, the monitor. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. This is Tuesday, Tuesday night. Tuesday night live. We're alive. Good Hi. evening. Hi, Janet Nash. Janet's already here waiting Are on me. You? And I'm hoping I'll get a new a newcomer. I'm waiting to see if Linda will say hello. Uh, hit the live chat button and and type in hello with the arrow and the there's a little uh, place to type. I've got a newcomer. <laughs> she was my 481st subscriber. Can you believe that? 481. There's Glenda. I Hi, knew Glenda. Glenda would be here. She sets her alarm clock for me. Oh, it's been a long day. Well, I'm waiting for her to come in. <laughs> she may not. <laughs> she. I told her she could lurk <laughs> if she wants to lurk. She. Uh, she just subscribed, so I don't know if she'll find me live or not. Oh, uh, let me, uh, no, I have not been busy today. <laughs> I have been busy laying around. Does that count? <laughs> Hi, Joan. Hi, Candy. Candace. Uh, so anyway, I, I've sort of been, I don't know, I guess I've been sleeping a lot with all of the rain we've had. I've just been really, really sleepy. I got some happy mail. Hi, Santa. We get these girls over, over the pond and get them in early. So let's, I'm going to open my Happy Mail now. This is from Janet Nash. And Janet had some dip, a little bit of difficulty Monday on her Monday stream. But she finally got on and she streamed for a couple hours. So if you haven't seen Janet's stream on from yesterday, please go and watch it later. Please go and watch it later. Isn't this yummy? Mmm. I love that. And I got three three queens. We're going to have to use those queens today. Use the royal queen. She's nice. We like her. She is a very nice lady. She's very polite. There you go. Okay, I'm going to cut this up on this side and save this part. Anyway, Janet uh, streamed Monday after she finally got all of her uh, trouble out of the way. She uh, had to call her call her son to the rescue to help her, and he did. He fixed it. I don't know what it was, but we couldn't hear her sound, and so she um, she uh, she couldn't figure out what went wrong. And I still I don't even know what went wrong, other than something wasn't pushed right. I won the prize. Look at this. This is some of her Echo. Uh, prints. She put plants down on this paper and then she put another piece of paper on and squished the plants in the middle and used a rolling pin. Very, very easy to do and fun to do. <laughs> well, um, I had some computer issues today. We had a big storm come through and uh, the 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 hurricane is north of me, way north, and but we obviously got some more weather, and it was a lot of lightning, wasn't it, Joe? Joe's in the house. Hi, ladies. And so um, the lightning um, made everything blink, 
and I didn't lose power. And I think Janet Nash or Janet um, Baum did lose. She lives in New York, and I think she did lose power. So she may not have her power back yet. I haven't heard. But uh, but anyway, everything had to be like rebooted here in my house. So I rebooted the internet on the hard drive. And I didn't have internet in the bedroom. So I rebooted my hard drive. I rebooted the internet box. And then I had to reboot the TV. And then I had to reboot my phone. And reboot my iPhone. And then there was one more blast box. And it was the box to the TV. That The TV, I turned it off and on. But I needed to turn the actual little box to the TV on and off. And then everything came back. But it took me about an hour to figure it out. Joe helped me. And then I got rebooted. Yeah, and then I then I booted Joe out of the bedroom. She's just trying to get me to go back up in the attic. And I said, I can't take you that little hole. <laughs> I was watching a TV show. I got involved in another TV show. So Janet sent me some snippets. And... Since she did, maybe I can get my heart out and we can put them on my heart. Oh, how pretty. Ooh, ooh, this is nice. This is some rickrack from England. And it's been, she was been outside. Oh, oh, you might go close the back door. Oh. Uh, this rickrack is a little bit different than some of the rickrack I have seen. And it's pretty. It's wavy instead of ziggy. Yeah, it's wavy instead of ziggy. Did you, did you understand that terminology? Here is some rickrack on my uh, heart snippet. And see, it's more ziggy than wavy. That's like ocean water. Ooh, I might have to do an ocean scene. Might have to put this in an ocean. But anyway, isn't that pretty? And then a piece of silk. Wow. That's nice. And a piece of... Oh, a sticker. A sticker with some designs on them. Some. I like to see these fabrics because they're from... They're from London, England. They're from England. England clothes and snippets. And here's another sticker. I know Mel Joy was doing some. Oh, these are individual stickers. See? Yeah. Woohoo! She did the whole sticker page. And see, this is a sticker. And then this is a sticker. And then this is the edge of the sticker. The edge of it. So I, I can use that. More stickers, more fabric. Thank you so much. These are lovely. Some silk. Lovely snippets. I'm going to use them today. <laughs> I'm going to use them today. Oh, I love it. These are these remind me of things that my grandmother would have had. You know, things that were very vintage. And they they do remind me of vintage vintage fabrics, and they they're thin, uh, and they feel they feel good. The cotton is is real real cold cotton, like I like to have on my pillowcases. It's the type of fabric that my grandmother would have had. Very nice. Thank you so much, Janet. And she wrote me a lovely note under all of this. It says, your prize of blue bits. Thank you so much for jo jo joining me for afternoon tea yesterday. Uh, toned all the... Crowned all the... I'm not sure what that says. It's. She'll have to tell me what it says. <laughs> Janet, what did you say? <laughs> Covered or crowned or cloned or cl loved all the. 
interaction? Is it you loved all the interaction? I think it's interaction. Yeah. Hi, Linda. Linda, everybody say hello to Linda Lewis. And she is my mother's neighbor. Oh, Linda, thank you for coming in. Thank you. You're going to love it here, Linda. I promise. <laughs> tell, tell the girls. What's this? From me to you. Oh, it's a card sign. From me to you. That sounds like a good uh, logo, Janet. Maybe we could get a, get a handle on that and make our own cards. From me to you. Yes, we will have fun. I opened some happy mail for my good friend from London, England. Linda, we are from all over the world. So, girls, type in where you live so we can show Linda where everybody is from. Linda and I are from Edgewater, Florida. So, we've got someone from Finland. You're going to see it, girls from all over London, England. There's my Janet Nash. Janet, I love this. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I get to play, I get to use the envelope and I get to use the sticker, airmail sticker, and the queen. Where's the queen? I thought I saved the queens. Here she is. There's our queen. There's, there's our queen. Virginia. Woohoo! <laughs> There's Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Candy. Hi, everybody coming in. There's 12 of you. So, anyway, I'm just kind of goofing off right now till everybody gets into the room. I um I did get some snippets. So I'm gonna put this underneath my table. And um, hey, Janet. You remember the buttons that you sent me? The paper buttons? Well, I put nail polish on them. So now I can tie some string around them and use them in my art. So I just wanted to tell you I did that. Because I think they came from you. But Janet did a video yesterday. And she had a little trouble getting on the live part. But after perseverance, she uh, got back on. And she taught us how to make some of these pockets. And the other day, we did corner pockets. Let's see if I have a sample of a corner pocket. Don't think I have one in here. But I can make one. And I did get some... <clears throat> some this is wallpaper from a wallpaper sample book. If you have not done uh, wallpaper books, I highly recommend it. Um, you take a piece of paper and you make a square by folding the corner up. This is her uh, first her first pocket that Janet did last Monday. And you cut this one side and you have a square. Okay. And then you're going to fold it the other way. And then you have an X in your square. <clears throat> and uh, let's see if I can remember how to do the other pocket. <laughs> so I'm going to put pretty sides together. And then I'm going to fold, uh, fold it in half again. So it's in quarters, right? So it's in quarters. So there's one, two, three, four. Those are quarters. So we fold them together. And <clears throat> we have a little bit of white showing. <clears throat> so I'm just going to trim that. You can do it. You can leave it if you want and do something to it later. But I'm just going to go ahead and trim it. And then I have a... I have a corner. So if I take a page and I put this on the corner of this page, I have a pocket here and then I have a pocket on the back side. Okay. 
and you will be glue we're going to be gluing this down but before we glue it down we're going to take our uh, one of our craft glue and we're going to be making a circle and I'm going to turn it inside out so that I can make my circle with a pencil and the pencil you can be able to see the pencil mark so I'm just going to make a half of a circle like that and I'll just use a purple pencil here purple pencil I'm going to make a half of a circle and this is going to be my thumb uh, a little thumb area for your thumb so I'm going to open my square back up and I'm going to fold it the other way and now I'm going to cut this square uh, half circle out with my scissors like that and I'm going to hang on to these two pieces and I'm going to fold it back the other way, the original way. And here I have two thumb areas in my on for my page. I have if I put this on my page right here, if I put the pocket glue it down right here, I've got a pocket here and a pocket here with my thumb for my thumb. And then I'm going to take my paper. And I'm going to open it back up and lay it down and uh, take my pencil back and I'm going to trace where that thumb is and I'm going to trace this thumb and I'm going to take these two pieces and glue them back down right here and right here and I can do that now Janet used uh, a little bit of washi tape you could do all kinds of things to decorate your uh, pockets. The sky is the limit. But I am using a little bit of glue with my uh, cutouts. <laughs> and they're slippery. They'll dry in just a second. And then when I close my pocket up, I have, um, I've covered up the, the naked part. <laughs> They're not naked anymore. I dressed my pockets. So now I can take and glue this into my book. I'm going to find a page that needs it. I don't know where it needs to go. But I could put it there. So I'm going to open it up and put glue on both of these sides. And this is my tag book, girls. Um, if you're planning on uh, playing with the tag exchange with me, you need to start making your tags. And I've made a book to put my tags in. So when they start coming in, I will be putting them in this book here. So now all I need to do is to take a piece of paper and um, put in my pockets uh, while, they're, while they're drying. See, this is the pocket right here. This is the pocket right here. And my iPad went blank. Whoopsie. I hope it's nothing major. So, uh, this is the one side of the pocket. And the other side is on this side. And I, I just put a piece of paper in there while it's drying. Okay, you're still here. Good. Uh, I've been having trouble with my iPad. I did reboot my iPad. But I've got an extra pocket right here. 
Well, now, yesterday, she taught us how to make another pocket, and it looks like this. So, uh, okay, it's just my, uh, my iPad. It's not my hard drive. And this pocket <clears throat> was made out of a piece of magazine a piece of magazine and when you open it up you can see it's a perfect rectangle sheet of paper out of a magazine it's one page out of a magazine and i can show you how to uh fold it real quick you're still there okay as long as you're still there But my, for some reason, my iPad, uh, but I'm not frozen on my big computer. So that's fine. I can still see chat. Cheryl said she went to a very short trip to England. Well, that was nice. That's nice. So um, you take a, a piece of uh, any kind of paper, rectangle piece of paper, and you put the, you make up two, you fold in the two corners until you get a point. So they're kind of in the middle. And remember when you used to make hats <laughs> out of newspapers and you'd make a big hat? So then you're going to take and flip it over and fold this one even with the bottom. So here's the two, the two that you made the point with and then you fold the bottom up opposite direction <laughs> and then i folded it uh, not in half but kind of uh maybe a quarter of an inch from the from the, uh, the center, this is the center right here. So I went in this direction about uh, a quarter of an inch. So I've, I've got a little funny corner here. So it's not exactly half. This would have been half. But I wanted it to come back a little bit so that I would have this edge and this edge. So this is going to be a pocket. And this is going to be a pocket. And then this piece that we folded back up is going to be a pocket as well. So there's going to be three pockets. One, two, and three. And then you take this end and just for to make it neat, I folded it back. And you glue this entire piece down in your book. So let me find a place where I can maybe glue this down. We try another page. I'm looking for the perfect page. And then I made some more of these. Um, and this one goes on the other side. I made this one to go on the left side. This one goes on the right side. So let me see if I can find a spot for this side. And I think I do. I've got room to put a pocket there. Okay, here's a pocket that's a half of a page. So I'm going to glue this pocket right here. Now it doesn't wrap around the page. It glues on top of the page. So um, you can take your ends and fold them under. Or you can trim them any way you want to do that. If you want to leave them out, then that means it would be a tuck spot. For example, instead of the pocket being limited to an edge, you leave this open so that anything in this area will work and anything in this area will work and then on the back pocket 
you might have to glue part of it down. I'm not sure how we'll work that out. We'll see. So I'm going to try to glue. Uh, I'm going to glue around this edge and the bottom edge only when I glue this down. I might have to add some more glue for strength, but we'll see. We'll see. Let's do it together. I haven't glued one down yet, so I'm not sure how it's going to work. So I just glued the edge here and here, and I'm going to fit it in right there. And it's a, it's a tuck spot pocket. Use my paper towel and clean it up. And let's see how this works. Let it dry for a second here. So I have a, a pocket here and a pocket here. That's two. And this one's three. And this one's four. This is a four pocket. If this is strong enough, you can leave it up and use this as a pocket. If it's not strong enough, I might have to glue it down because this is magazine paper and it's very thin. So you have to experiment with, that's right, you have to experiment with your, uh, with your things and see what you can do. See, this one is wanting to open up. So there's nothing to hold this tag spot. So I would want to probably take a little bit of glue and put it on the bottom right there to make that tuck spot. Just like that. And glue that one down. So we're seeing, we're seeing how it all works. <laughs> we're seeing how it all works. I'm going to let that dry. And we're going to come back and see if it's strong enough. I think it will be. It's strong enough for a piece of paper. I got four. So we're going to leave that one there. That was learned from, um, from Janet Nash. And on the back of these two pages, I put some wallpaper down here and here. This is just regular wallpaper. And... So let's make a pocket for these. I'll do it again. Okay, I'll do it again. So on this one, I'm going to pick a rectangle <laughs> out of wallpaper. I'm going to use a little bit thicker paper. Okay, so I'm going to use a, use a rectangle. And this is, I don't have a size. I, I, I'm eyeballing it. I'm just eyeballing it. Now, I'm going to turn this over because there's a there's a, a pretty side over here. And I'm going to take my rectangle. And we might have to adjust this later on. So, I'm going to fold these two in to make a point. Like you're making a hat or a sailboat or something funny. And I'm going to put these two together like this. And then I'm going to fold this one back the other direction. Like that. And then I'm not going to fold it in half. This is the half part point. I'm going to go in about a fourth of an inch. I'm just drawing that line there so that you can understand that I'm I'm going I'm not folding it on the half. I'm folding it on one side of the half. So I'm going to fold it right there on this side and I'm going to try to make it square on the edges in the bottom. And then when I flip it over I've got I've got this pocket and this pocket and this one and this one's up too high so i'm going to unfold it and i'm going to fold it down halfway and guess what it's going to make it look so pretty 
you fold things to where they are to your benefit. Okay. So I folded this one down halfway and I got the pattern. So now I've got a pocket. Trying to get some contrast paper here for you. So I've got this pocket is here, here, and here. So when I glue this one down in my book, I'm going to glue down. I can take and fold this edge in so this angle looks good. And I could do the same thing with this one and fold that down or even cut it. Okay. I could even cut it. So now this is this is just a pocket out of magazine or wallpaper. So I have three pockets here. <clears throat> one right here. One right here. And one right here that's straight. There's two uh, diamond or a triangle pockets and one square uh, rectangle pocket right here. So when I glue this down, I'm going to glue down the bottom edge and the side edge on the back. And I'm going to go ahead and just trim, trim these little corners off. I can glue them down or cut them off. And with the wallpaper, it's okay. I think it's thick enough to handle it that I can glue it all, uh, just cut them off. If it was the magazine, you might glue them down for stability, extra stability. So here's my corner pocket made out of some wallpaper. And I'm going to glue it down on the bottom edge and the side edge. We're working in our tag book. This is going to be a tag book that when you all send me your tags, I'm going to put your tags in these books, in this book. And this is a reconstructed novel that I got from the library for 50 cents. They had a, a, a sale. They were selling their mag, uh, old books. Yep, yeah, you'll get it. I'll do it again. Don't worry about your misspellings. We understand typish. <laughs> we all speak typish in here. <laughs> now, this one is still loose. So, I need to put a little bit of glue right there. Okay. And if this flap bothers you, you could put just a little tiny glue there. It won't hurt a thing. It will not hurt a thing to glue a little bit down. But I'm just going to glue this edge down right there. Just the bottom only. Just the bottom. And I'm just going to rub. So this pocket. Let the glue, give the glue a chance to <laughs> stick. Give the glue a chance. So with this pocket, I could put a tag here, here, and here. And I left these edges open. They're open. So if I have something wider, I can get it in there. Okay. If it's wider, if it's something wider, as long as this is, you know, it'll fit in the book. I could put something else in here that's a little bit wider, like the tags we're going to be getting. So this glue needs to dry, okay? And we'll come back and look at it a little bit later. Now, let's see. Uh, I would like to have another piece of wallpaper, but I wanted to get a bigger piece. So let me get, let me get some wallpaper, another piece of wallpaper, and I'll do it again. These are the, and I did this one out of some of the Braille paper. I'm going to try to see if I can't get my uh, YouTube back up. It's black on my 
screen and I would like to be able to see what I'm doing. I can see in the big screen, but let's try it again. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. I can see me now. So anyway, I'm going to show you again how to make these little pockets. They're really easy. And you can make them for the right side or the left side, depending on which way you fold this last fold. So this one's going to go on this side. And if you take the ends and cut these ends, then you're not limited on the size of the pocket. You can put something wider in it. The, if you fold these back, if you would cut this end, you know, but you could just cut those ends off or leave them out like that. You could just leave them out as like a triangle and just cut, square them up to make the, to make them match. You see how those match? And I'm going to glue this pocket down right here. This is made out of Braille. The Braille paper. Okay. So I'm just going to put glue on the outer side edge and the bottom edge. And I will need to put some more, but we'll, I'll show it to you in a second. So I'm putting this on the corner of my page. And then this needs to be glued down. Okay. So I'm just going to glue it down by gluing, putting the glue at the very bottom of the page. On the very bottom. These are fun. So now I have a pocket. <clears throat> I have a pocket right here. Right here. And right here. And I think uh, Janet did some shading on the edges of her pockets, like a few little bit of decoration. And if I did this, you will be able to see the edges of those pockets that I'm talking about. Because this, this uh, paper is all one shade and it kind of all blends together. Okay, so I left these ends out on purpose so that I could get at something in here like this all the way down. And here's the second pocket and here's the third pocket. One, two, and three. So I could put three tags in here. That was the purpose of that. Now I need to let those dry, but I only put the glue on the edges here and here. I made another piece, another pocket out of music paper. And I'm going to put this music paper right over here on this side, but I'm going to make a new fold. I, I had the fold over on this side, about one fourth. Okay, and it was a pocket for this side of the left side of the page. So I want to put the pocket over here on this side. So I need to refold this fold and put it on this side of the half about a fourth of an inch this direction. So you could make them right or left sided depending on the way you fold it. So I'm going to put a new fold right there. And now I can put this one over here on this side. And I'm going to um, take my corners and I want this to be open. So I'm going to trim that off right there. And this one's already trimmed or I folded it forward, didn't I? It's folded forward or I can trim that one off. 
So this pocket will go over here. And I've got three pockets. I'm going to glue the outside edge down. Now Janet did these Monday. And she might have explained it better than me. And if she did, then I think you should go and look at her video and see how she made these pockets to go right or left. And you can you can figure them out. They're not hard. They're not rocket scientists. She even said that this was not rocket scientist. <laughs> and it's not. It's easy. It's just origami, type of origami. Origami paper folding is all it is. So I have a pocket over here and I'm going to show you the edges. <clears throat> by highlighting my edges a little bit. So there's two triangles. Here's a triangle pocket. And it, it can go all the way down. I have to let that drew, glue dry. And here's the second pocket. And here's the third pocket. And it's a half of a triangle. So this is, this is going to be good too when it dries. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Melissa. Hi, everybody coming in the room. There's Barbara. Hi, Barbara. So I was demonstrating how to put some pockets in your, in your books. And I explained two different pockets. Uh, I explained a corner pocket that goes on both sides of the page. And then I showed you how to do a triangle pocket. And it has three tuck spots. One, two, three. And I think I had one <laughs> that had an extra tuck spot. I don't know how I did it. Don't ask me. But the three are popular right this instant. So I don't know where the other one is. I thought I put another one in here. Here it is. I, I, I don't remember how I folded it, but I've got three, four tech spots. I've got one, two, three, and four. So you keep folding your papers till you can figure out how to make a triangle. And I'm going to show you one last time. Okay, Barbara. Pick me up some candy while you're there. <laughs> ah, Cindy's here. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to show you one last time how to use a magazine to uh, make this triangle pocket. One more time. And then we're going to move on, okay? And if you if you can't get it, don't give up, okay? Because it's really easy, and you can always watch the replays again. But I sat in front of the computer yesterday and made up a, a bunch of right-sided and left-sided pockets, okay? So don't get discouraged if you haven't figured it out. You have a rectangle. It's not the same as a square, right? A rectangle is longer than a square. You lay your paper down and you want to fold in two, the top two corners together till they make a point. So these together will make a point right there. Right? They're together down here and they're together at the top. And then you just 
fold the edges down just like that. That's the first step. The second stop, the second is you're going to fold this piece, but you're going to fold it backwards. So we want to fold it this on the, to this side. And you find the edge and you make a fold. So you literally folded this piece, but you folded it underneath. Okay, now this is an optional move. So this is the center of this paper, all of this paper. This is the center point right here. So you're going to make a line. You're going to make a line about a fourth of an inch to the left or to the right, depending on which way you want your pocket to show. Okay? It doesn't matter which side uh, you make it. it. It just depends on which side of the page you're going to put your pocket on. Okay? So, <clears throat> you you have a choice of putting your folding it here or here. You have a choice. So as soon as you find out your choice, as soon as you figure out which side you're going to put this page on, you're going to fold it right on that line so that it's not exactly with the point, okay? And you're just going to line up the bottom part straight, and then you fold. So this pocket will go on the right side, of my book okay if I want it to go over on this side I can't see that extra pocket so I would fold it on the other the other line if I folded it on the other line it would be on this side of the point and I would have my folds for the left side of the page here and here so it doesn't matter, okay, one side or the other. So when you put this down on this side, you're going to glue it down on this edge and the bottom edge, the edge of the side on the bottom. And before you do, we've got these little pieces here. And I'm going to trim my pieces and I'm trimming them to fit the angles of my pocket. So I'm just trimming those little pieces off. And then when I put my pocket down, I'm going to have a place here, two, and three. So I've got three pockets here. This is what Janet taught us yesterday on her video so you can go back to janet's monday stream and review how she made it maybe she can explain it better than me so when i glue my pocket down i'm not folding these uh under because i want i want them to be opened so i just need to glue this bottom page down a little bit and glue on the very bottom of the page so when I fold I'll have a pocket so I've got one pocket two pockets and three pockets on this page thank you Janet <clears throat> it's not really hard you might have to finagle a little bit if you can it's just paper you all can fix this if it doesn't look right you can glue and craft on this to make it look right you could even use a little bit of washi tape on the outer part of it 
Let me show you how to do that. You get you some washi tape. And you can even use scotch tape or masking tape. Okay. So I'm going to put a piece of tape here. I'm, I'm half on the page and half off of the page. And I'm just going to cut it at the bottom. I'm going to turn my page. And this is the other side of the tape. And I'm going to tape it over to the, the next page. So it'll have a little bit of washi tape over here. And you just rub it down. So this washi tape trimmed it. And it's extra security. So now I'm going to put a piece on the bottom of the page. Halfway on the page. And halfway off of the page. And you can go all the way across the bottom of the page. Trim it off level. Make it even. Turn your page. <clears throat> Here's the other half of the tape and fold it onto this back page to secure your tape. Okay, I didn't get it exactly straight, but it looks okay to me. It's okay. <laughs> and so there I have, not only did I glue it, I add a little bit of washi tape. So these pockets are going to really be nice to hold some tags. Okay, so that was my last time in, in showing you those tags, and I wanted to move on, okay, because I spent about a half hour or so on them. So this is my tag book, and I altered a, I altered a novel. It was a reading book. I tore out, I, I glued about three or four pages, tore out a chapter. I glued three or four more pages, tore out a chapter all the way through the book so i only have about 10 pages in this book but there there's a lot of room so that i can put some bulky tags in here because it's going to be a tag book so you have your tags they can go in the new pockets like that they can go in those other pockets like this here here or here I could put three tags on this page it is it's coming along lovely it is it's really looking good this is a piece of napkin this is a piece of scrapbook paper this is a little pocket uh, like a library pocket and it was made for me from Janet Glines so you might have some pockets that people have sent you and you may put a belly band in. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to make pockets. All kinds of ways. This one doesn't have a, a pocket yet. So I've still got that to work on. I'm going to be working on this all month long. Okay. I'm going to be working on the tag book. And maybe working on tags. So I'll, I think I've worked enough on the tag book today. So I'm going to move on to some other crafts. We got more to talk about. Now these, these that I have already made, I'm going to put them in my stash and use them in other projects. Okay. So <laughs> tag your it. That's right. Isn't that cute? So, so these are going to go in my tag stash, pocket stash now. I've got, I've got pockets I can stash. But these are extra that I made, okay? So I'm going to st put them in my stash. So there's our tag book. I'm going to put it over here for now. I didn't have a, uh, an agenda today. But I'm just looking around and finding stuff on my desk to play with. Um, we made last week these little tiny books. I've got three books. I've got a big book, a medium book, and a tiny book. There's Papa, Mama, and Baby. <laughs> I got three books. This is my glue books. These are my glue books. I made these books 
online so you can watch my videos from last week to uh, check them out and we're going to glue some things in our books so I'm going to start with the baby book and I've got I've got these two little buttons that are just they're just getting in the way so I'm going to have to use the buttons so let's use the buttons now in this little book it was made out of some scrapbook paper and I fan folded the yellow paper and I fan folded it glued some of the pages together and I put it in here with yarn I, there's a video on this book so you'll have to go back and watch the video so the only thing I'm going to do today is show you how to put something into it and I'm going to pick a button I've got this button right here it's a paper button and I'm going to ink it up the edges so that you can see the edges it's a little heart button and it's flat so this is a good thing when you're putting things into your book so it doesn't become too bulky they're in heavy uh, they're in scrapbook paper and they were given to me uh, they're they're not too much thicker than a copy paper they're a little bit thicker than 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 uh, t typing paper so they could be made out of scrapbook paper very nicely or even uh, cardstock I would think no they were gifted to me now this one was white when I got it it was just plain white and I put nail polish on it and I did another one and I think it's in either this book or this book we'll kind of come across it my other button in a minute my, my red one so just a moment I'll get those out but I'm going to I'm inking this one up and I'm going to get some thread and I'm going to get embroidery thread uh, embroidery th thread has a little bit of thickness to it and I think I'll just go ahead and and get a black get dark so I'm going to take a piece of thread this is embroidery thread and I'm going to uh, about I'm just going to use about 12 inches to show you how I can put this thread on the button. I'm going to take the end of my button of my thread and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the end of that thread. A little bit of glue and now I'm going to twist it and pull off. I'm going to twist it and pull it off and i am making a little hard end on the end of this thread okay i don't have to use a needle now okay i gotta look at these pictures we'll let that dry christy's sending me pictures oh wow christy w e w james Christy Wainscott earned an audible mention in a national contest. Wow, Christy. Okay. I'm not sure what she did, but I'd have to read it. Let's <laughs> see if I can read it since she did this. E.W. James and producer manager Christy Wainscott were re recently awarded honorable mention in the national idaho potato lovers display contest way to go christy the annual contest challenging grocery retailers to create a unique display featuring idaho potatoes hormel bacon toppers and fresh gourmet products. It looks like a loaded potato to me. Wainscott constructed her Star Wars 
themed, it's a Star Wars themed display in February with the help of the Protoost Associated, the, uh, Produce Associate, Dennis Reed. The store ordered the, a variety of products for the display and Wayne's Cots gathered her Star Wars items to include from friends and family. So it's got balloons. It's got Yoda. <laughs> this is in my Facebook uh, group. So you all need to go to the Facebook group and you can zoom in on the pictures and the display. And she she's used all kinds of grocery items. She made a, a, a poster and she's got all of the uh, more posters. And it looks like she did an art poster up here. Woohoo! Way to go, Christy. And there's Idaho potatoes and other produce. And then there is a uh, R2-D2 head over peels. And somebody in the background, I don't know who that is. Is that you, Christy? Christy, is that you? Is that my Christy? <laughs> Thank you, guys. So it's on my Facebook page. Where'd she go? <laughs> but thank you for sharing that there's a little bit more to read so i think that is awesome somebody had some bad weather janet Baum. she didn't have electric for a little while but she had a big tree that fell down in her backyard and that doesn't look very good to me so prayers to all of those in the uh, in the storm. Cheryl got a new book. She's going to paint some of these pictures. I saw that book, but I didn't buy it. I did not buy that book. So thank you, Christy. So you'll have to go back to my Facebook page and look at some of these uh weather conditions wow look at that tree snapped there it goes wow a lot of weather uh for the storms here's a picture of freddie and he went to the mailbox see his letter he's got his letter right there and he went to the mailbox <laughs> That's Janet Nash's post box in London, England. That's how she mails her letters. So, okay. So, Janet said they did not hit her trees. Oh, my goodness. So, anyway, <clears throat> you'll have to go check out the pictures on Facebook. Now, um, back to my my heart button it's a paper heart button and i have some embroidery thread i put some glue on the end and i twisted it and pulled it off let it dry and now i have a little tiny homemade needle so i'm going to go down into my heart on one hole and I'm going to go back up to the other hole of my heart. And that just saved me from having to try to lick all of those strings together and try to get them into that hole. So I'm going to lay my button down and I am going to tie a knot with my thread. Like you would tie in a shoe. I tied a little one one. Uh, one knot now i'm going to tie the bow onto my shoe right like you're tying a pair of shoes so you tie a bow and then you take your bows and tie another knot with them so they won't come undone it's a little trick that i've learned with children's shoes tying their shoes and my art so i tie the knot so that my thread won't come undone 
I didn't do a very good job. It looks like a mess. So I'm going to try it again. I'm going to tie a pretty bow. And if you're trying to tie a bow onto something like this and you don't want the ends to come undone, you can also add a touch of glue. And <clears throat> since I mentioned it, I'm going to go ahead and tie my bow, make it pretty, add one little drop of glue in the middle on the knot. And it, it doesn't matter if it glues down to the button because it's a paper button, right? That will dry clear. And now you can take your bows and trim the, the two tags hanging down the tassel part of the bow. Trim it up. And now you have a button with a bow on top of it. Okay. There's your button. And I'm going to take this button and glue it in my little tiny book. So let's find an empty page. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to put a little glue on the back and glue it down in my book. Now I'm going to leave this open so that it will dry. Okay. So I'm just going to put this over to the side and I'll show it to you later before we leave. And these were the trimmings and I don't need them. This is why I used a long piece. You could probably get by with half with six inches of it. But I wanted to, I wanted to have plenty so that I could demo it. Demo you the button. So we're not going to worry about the rest of that. Now I still have another button here. And this one is, uh, it was it was a white paper button, and I put nail polish on it from the dollar store. And I put it right on top of my button. It has a little bit of sparkle. So I'm going to get some green thread. And I only need about six inches, right? But I'm going to cut about eight. <laughs> I just want a little extra just in case I have fiddly fingers. And I'm going to take the end of my string. And I and if I want to go in here to the button, I'm going to miss it up because I'm going to, there's not going to be, there's a string that doesn't want to go through all at once. So if I take a little bit of glue and glue the ends together, just a little bit of glue, and I'm going to twist it into a, a little makeshift needle. And it makes it easier to thread the knee, this uh, thread into the button down and then back up through the other hole. And we're going to tie another bow. So I'm just going to tie the first knot. Like you're tying a, tying a, a bow on a tennis shoe, like you're tying your shoes. And then I'm going to take my rabbit ears and make two rabbit ears. And what I was trying to teach you earlier is to take the two rabbit ears and tie them in a knot. And then your bow will be stable, whatever you put your bow on, on your craft project. And the bow won't come undone so easily. So I've got a little knot on that bow. And then you just kind of rearrange your bow to where the way you want it looking on the page. If you want, if you want to uh, put your tails in one direction or something like that and flatten it out, you can. And now this one over here has a curve. Well, it was wrapped around that little cardboard uh, bobbin. The, they're called the bobbins. So if you want to get this curve out of this thread, all you have to do is wet it. Get your wet finger in your paint water and wet that and you can straighten that out. So that's easy to do. 
So then you take your bow and you trim your tails the way you want them evened up. And now this button is ready to go in the next book. So this is the medium size book. And it seems to me I, I put a button in one of these pages and it must have been this book. Because I don't see it over here either. So anyway, I'm going to find an empty page. I'm going to find an empty page. And I'm going to put my button down. And it could be on something. On with another page. You might find to put it with something or uh, on the same on a spot. So I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to put a little glue on it and put it right there. So there's my button. And I think I'm going to uh, draw around it so that you can see the button a little bit better. So I'm just going to trace around the button. And these flat buttons are good for books because they don't take up to, you know, they don't cause a lot of bulkiness. Sometimes our books can get really bulky <laughs> and fluffy. <laughs> so this is, this is going to be good. And if you want, you can still continue to put one little drop of glue in the middle of your bow. To secure it down. I don't think it's going to go anywhere because I glued it down on the page and I tied a knot in it. But there's our little button. We'll put this over to dry and I'll show it to you before we leave. Now we have our, our big glue book. We're moving along. Doing really good, girls. So hi, everybody. Hi, Sharon. Hi everybody, anybody I missed. So now this is a this is a, a composition book that I copied with wallpaper. I painted the inside and I took all the pages in my book, or most of the pages, and I glued two of the pages together. They were they were uh, paper like this, and I took two pieces of paper. And I glued them together. I put glue down on, on one side. And I sandwiched these two pieces together to make a page. To make them sturdy. Okay. So I did that throughout the book on a lot of pages so far. I still have more pages to do. So there's room to grow in this book. I'm, I just started it. Hi, Susan. So, so anyway, I started in the middle of the book and I glued, started gluing some pages together. And uh, so this was like one of the first pages I did just by gluing a, a magazine down, a picture down and some trimmings from a scrapbook paper, extra paper. I put a word on it, made up a word, cut it out of a magazine uh, uh, ransom style <laughs> and framed it on a piece of paper. So, and then I, I did the same thing over here. This was a napkin and this was a napkin background with another girl on top. This is a part of a napkin, part of scrapbook paper. This is a recipe card I put in. I tipped it in so that you could see the back of the recipe card and actually use this if you want to. And a picture of a family gathering around the, the picnic table. <laughs> They're getting ready to have a family dinner. So this is a glue book. You glue down things in it and you make it up as you go. So here was some leftover paint. Then I had some leftover paper. And I turned it into a sailboat. I just I saw this uh, triangle. And it was, you know, white looking. And it's a piece of uh, wallpaper. And I had this black strip. And then, then this was another piece of triangle red paper. And I said, oh, a sailing. This could be a sail. <laughs> I thought it could be a sail. So I cut the bottom of the boat to make it look like that. And added another girl on the boat. 
easy to do. This one has a corner pocket in it. So I can add something to this. And I might just add one of these other pockets in here. <laughs> I'm going to put that pocket in there. Because I might end up putting it in here somewhere. Just to store it. I got an extra pocket, so I put it in there. Here I have another pocket, and I can put a piece of uh, scrapbook paper right there. So you can do anything you want to your glue book. Leftover paint and a magazine image. Two pages glued together, ready to go. Two pages glued together, ready to go. And here we did a page together with an, a... Uh, happy mail napkin and this was some happy mail and this was some happy mail and these i think they came from deborah brown i should put a happy mail deborah brown on here uh -huh. And uh, so you just make a page. This was uh, some, I was doing some stenciling on the back of this page. And I used black gesso and a nap, black and white napkin. And then I did that offline. And then I came online and I said, hey, let's make a Happy Meal page here. And I put one, two, three, four, five items on this page. And it's a, it's a flower from a wallpaper book, a piece of scrap from a hook rug, uh, another piece of fabric scrap that has been frayed on the edges, ruffled on the edges, a magazine picture, and a magazine word that says the center of everything. And it's a page that I did. It's just a glue book page. And I love it. <laughs> so today, let's do something in our glue book page. Let me pick out five items and see what we can put together with five random items. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Hi, everybody. So we're going to do a Happy Mail page. So I have a piece of, uh, I'm going to go to a, a new page. Here's a new page. I've got a piece of lace. That's one. I've got a piece of scrapbook paper. That's two. I've got a piece of tissue paper. Three. A piece of uh, gold. Uh, scrapbook paper design or paper that's four and a piece of ephemera i call this ephemera it was given to me by deborah brown and it's a piece like a card that you would put um, a, a tally on a registered like if you're keeping track of something like a checkbook or it's not a checkbook but it's a, a purchase a record of something that was purchased and they handwritten the balance and kept a tab going on uh, it was like a charge account so we're going to use that so I've got five things to use on a on one blank piece of paper so I'm going to start <clears throat> by putting some paint down on my page Put a little bit of paint down. I'm working in a glue book. This is fun. I love doing this kind of stuff. I randomly picked a page. And I'm going to randomly pick some paint. And this was the first one I looked at. So... I am going to use this, but I'm also going to use a little bit of gesso. And this gesso has white paint in it. So, it's going to dilute it down and make it lighter. So, I just need one little dot of this. 
a dollop. I'll say that's a dollop. And I'm going to use uh, a little bit of this. And I'm going to put a dot in all four corners for starters and see if that's going to be enough. And this is this is an acrylic craft smart paint called red. And I am going to use my my fan brush, <laughs> which has some glue on it. It don't matter to me if it's got a little bit of glue on it. Honest engine, it won't hurt a thing. I'm going to use the glue. <laughs> and I'm going to smear the, uh, the gesso out. And now I'm going to smear the red paint. The gesso uh, gives your paper a little bit of thickness it'll dry thick and uh, that's that's all I'm going to do right there and I'm going to get the heat my heat gun and dry this and we'll put this in the water and I'm going to dry that She's going to make, Melissa's going to make a book cover. Good for you, Melissa. And Stan, Sana says, sorry about being quiet. I'm working on a project. <laughs> That's what keeps you away. So I just sort of randomly put this paint down. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. And I'm going to show you why. But I am going to dry it just a little bit. Okay, that should that should do it. I'm going to just remove this now. <clears throat> now let's see. I've got the lace. And I've got some tissue paper. I think this is pretty. And I could put this all the way down on this page. Or I could take part of it and tear it and kind of make a mosaic. So I'm going to fold it, uh, fold it down a little bit so that I can tear off some of this paper by hand like this. And then I'm going to tear it some more. And maybe tear it the other direction and see what I get now. So I'm going to get my my, my uh, fan brush back and I'm going to glue these down randomly all over my page. So you'll still see some of the pink background. So I've cleaned my brush. Clean my brush again, <laughs> a little more, and I'm going to use my same fan brush in my glue, and I'm going to glue some of these down. So just lightly touch with the glue, and touch with the paper, touch with the glue, touch with the paper, just randomly glue down these papers. Got a lot more. These now this one's in a strip. Let's see what we can do with this. Like that. Ooh, -hoo, I like that. Here's another piece. Ooh, 
gloom every which way no rhyme or reason they don't have to go in the same directions they might even overlap a little bit no big deal no big deal good i like that just randomly gluing down some tissue paper This is the kind of things that you can do without thinking. You don't have to think about anything. You're just filling in the spots. Filling in the spots. Filling in the spots. I need a little bit more paper. And I can save the rest of this for another project. There we go. A little more. Right there, and then we're it's good enough. Right there, that's nice. Now, I do have a little bit of this thin um, glue, and this glue has a little bit of a matte uh, varnish in it, and it's real thin. And I'm just going to go over top of the whole thing with it. And it will seal down all of the tissue paper now. Just makes it nice and smooth. So, Because your tissue paper will move a little bit if it's not all the way down real good. So, what I have now is I have this. And let's see. I think I'm going to look for... I've got a sled, a flower, a hat, and a jump rope. So I'm going to cut these three pictures out. I'm going to tear them so that they'll have an edge. And then maybe I can ink them. Five items. I'm just using five items. And so I'm going to get some ink. And I'm going to just ink these around the edges. I could have used some pink. Um, some pink uh, ink. Like this. See what it looks like. Fix it up. There's one. I'm working on a glue book page. No rhyme or reason for anything. I'm just uh, playing around. I'm just making a collage. And I'm going to randomly, I randomly put paint down. I randomly put tissue paper down. And then I have these four prints as vocals. And I am going to put these down on here, but I'm probably going to randomly put them down and then use these other two items. I got two more pieces of craft supplies to use. So these will be going on top because these are the vocal the pictures, right? So I'm probably going to be putting them down something like this. Uh, last okay on the last part so I'm going to hold on to these pieces and and move them over here for the moment because I like I like them and I like having them on the way I just had them but I still got two more pieces 
of ephemera to use. I don't have to use them, but I want to. So I'm thinking on strips. So I'm going to tear this in some strips and I don't care if it tears straight or not. And I'm going to tear off the white on the edge. Tearing the white off. And I am going to be putting these down. And we'll get another one. It doesn't matter which how it tears. It does not matter. But I am going to remove the white. And now I'm going to get a piece of this gold. I don't think this tears. Well, it does tear. Okay. It tears. It does tear. So I'm going to alternate the gold with the chart paper, the charting paper, or the, it looks like to me, it's a, it's a, uh, a billing paper type, something like that. Okay. And then on, I've got some lace. So maybe I can just put a little bit of lace on the bottoms or the tops or the edges of these little focal point pictures. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to cut this and I might use one more piece of this gold. I'd like to have another piece. And this is textured. This is textured with a pretty pretty textured it's raised up a lot so these are textured as well so there we go I like that all right I'm going to go ahead and glue these three things, these uh, two pieces down. I should ink them. Let me ink them. <laughs> it's all right. I won't ink that one because it's already down, but I can ink these. And the ink does show up on this ephemera paper really nice. I'm not paying attention to craft or to chat because I'm 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 in I'm organizing this page here. So you all can uh, let me know if I've overlooked anything because I haven't. <laughs> Teresa's ready for a nap. Uh finally she finally got her appointment to see a specialist for her hands good luck thursday at two uh yes i'm so ready for them to do something so i can use my hands again i can't even peel potatoes anymore bless your heart uh janice glenn says hi beth hey all hello embossed yes it is embossed uh thank you Teresa. cheryl says welcome to janice Candy says hi, Janice. Okay, let me know if I if I need to pay attention. But I'm I'm playing. I'm doing what I do best. So I'm making a glue book page out of five items and some paint. One, two, three, four, five. Include the six items, including the paint. Okay. But still, that's pretty good. So I'm inking the edges of my strips. I put down pink paint. Pink, uh, actually, it was white and pink paint. The white was from the gesso. And uh, the tissue paper on top of that. We're just doing layers and layers.
layers and layers. Now, after I get done with this, uh, this is the finishing up on the glue book. Let's go ahead and paint something. Y'all want to paint a bird tonight? I can get my bird book out. And I also have another paint along book. And there is uh, some animals. There's, I think, a tiger lily I haven't painted yet. Um, but I'd like to get, I'd like to get on, I guess, with the birds. Need to do the birds. <laughs> Will the bird to be, hold still to be painted? <laughs> I don't know. I might have to hog time. <laughs> Paint a bird. You're right. We might have to put a bird cage out. So anyway, I got those uh, marked up a little bit. I'm going to glue those down. I think we're done with the ink. This is almost done. And then we can pick a word out. I like to pick a word or something, a saying or something. My uh, computer has a, a volume. Turn the volume on. Okay. There we go. So let's see what we've got here this down okay So I've used, I'll save this for uh, later and this for later. I'll put it back in the box. Don't need any more of that. And I'm going to trim some, I will put some pieces of this lace on these letters. I need four of those. So that's good. That's good. Too many things out. Too many things out. So I'm going to... Um, Trying to decide. Let me put these down. And um, I'm probably going to use um, uh, a little bit of tacky glue. To put that lace down. Because sometimes the lace won't stay still with just regular Elmer's glue. And uh, I'm not gluing the very bottom yet. I'm not pressing down just yet. So I'm going to put a little bit of lace. But I'm going to also use a little bit of this tacky glue. Right here. And then a little bit of lace. And it's going to poke out from underneath the... Uh, can you see it? It kind of blends in together. Can you see it? Pay attention. 
watching Santa. You might need to do know how to do this. <laughs> She's saying she wants to sleep, but her mind's fighting her. <laughs> I know Santa likes to do glue books. She is a glue book master. I'm telling you, I've, I've, I've seen Santa glue. I like how she glues. So anyway, I put just a little piece of lace underneath each one of these letters. And there's my page. Boom. So um, I'm going to go over this with some of this thin glue again. I'm going to use this glue up eventually. There's not much left in it. And um, I'm going over top of it all so that it gets all glued down, lace and all. It's really quite fine, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Do it anyway. Get everything glued down real good. And then let's find a word. Let's find a power word or something. Let's see what we can find over here. I've got tranquil. Transformation. Transforming. You guys help me pick it out. <laughs> Cheryl took a cat nap too. Outstanding. I've got hat, flower, shed, and sled, and jump rope. I don't know. What do these remind you of? Wholesome? Are they wholesome? Christy, <laughs> I just showed your uh, award off. Congratulations. Reach out above. Okay, Cheryl, I'm going back up. Christy got her a nice happy mail. Good. Congratulations. My tablet says Beth started streaming 80 seconds ago. Wow. Maybe you need to upgrade your update because you've been in here since the beginning. And we might have some weather, weather difficulties. Because <laughs> I had some weather uh, hiccups earlier today. I think I got everything. So, anyway, I'm going to put wholesome. These are all nice wholesome words, maybe. I probably don't even know a word. I probably need to put a quote on it or something. But I'm going to put wholesome at the top. Uh, Joyce and Deborah has on a hi, 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 Joyce, hi, Deborah. Good, glad you came in. Glad you all got in here. Oh, Cheryl got Cheryl got her some nuvos today. Some of these. Okay, now this is really, really wet, so I'm going to have to let it over here and dry until uh, after a while. I'll show it to you before we leave. That's my my line for the day. I'll sh let it dry and sh show it to you before we leave. So save those words. Save that tissue paper. Good, 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 good. This is a page in the glue book. Woohoo! Now, the next thing, the next thing is uh, the bird. Are we going to do a bird? Listen to the bird book. Where's the little birdie book? Here's the birdie book. Let's see what we got left. We did the owl and we did the, the uh, eagle. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We did those. We did the uh, the blue jay. We haven't done these guys yet. 
Sharon did this one. We did this one. So we got this little bird in the ivy. We did the 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 crane. And we've got these three little blue birds. We've got the peacock. And is this a duck? Uh-oh, Gandy had some bad weather. There's no trees left in the park or across the street. <gasps> Scary. Somewhere there's a house that lifted off its foundation. Oh, my gosh. A mandarin duck. Okay. Janice, you want to do the mandarin duck today? Shall we do the mandarin duck? There he is. Nora, here he is here. The peacock feather peacock. Peacock. You want the peacock? Okay. Your choice. Okay. Let's see if I can find the peacock. Here's the peacock. We're going to do them all, so no problem. I've been wanting to do the peacock for a long time, but that's okay. <laughs> Here's the peacock. Nora is is giving me a cold nose. She wants to out of the room. <laughs> she's so sweet. She won't come to me, but she's sweet. She's not a bad dog. She's just got she's skittish. I'll turn the air down just a tad. It's hot in here. Okay. The peacock is landscaped. And there's one picture of the peacock. Here's another picture of the peacock. Here or here. This one's bigger. I like that. Let's see if there's another one in here. There's usually two or three choices to look at. And if there is, I take it to my advantage. Here's the biggest one right here. This is the biggest one. I'm going to use this picture. So the first thing I want to do is to uh, find me a good little pencil. Like this one. And I'm going to go ahead and sketch. You can see, as you can see, the sketching on the paper is helpful to me. But you can't really see it from here. You can barely see it. So I'm going to go ahead and go over some of the highlights. And uh, it may not be all of them. But I, that way you can sort of see see what I am doing, you know, from the camera view. I want you all to see what I'm doing. And I might not do the whole entire feather, but I could do parts of the feather, uh, these circle parts, so you can sort of see See where I'm going. And, and then once I get going, you'll see you'll it'll all form together. But I just think it's important that you kind of see what I'm doing. That's only fair. 
That only would be fair to let you all see. And I won't mind the pencil uh, popping through the painting because I am going to use gouache. And uh, I won't mind the pencil showing through on my on my bird. So this is the part of the back of the bird, and then this is the front of the bird. And I'm just tracing, you know, I'm, I, that's, that's the beauty of having this particular book uh, versus some of the other things that I have done. I was having to trace, sketch, do the sketching part. And this is what makes this uh, book so nice to have. If you ever want to get this book, I'll give you the name of it. It's called Birds Water Collar Art Pad. And all of the pads, the papers, have the birds on them. So the sketching is already done for you, which is probably the hardest part for me to do is the sketching part. The painting, I think, is easy to do. And uh, so, and then all these feathers will have, um, you know, they, they're all going to go out from the background of the bird. So I'm not going to draw all of those. But that represents the feathers. And then there's the circles. Here's the circles in the feathers. And then she has, and I don't remember if the, the male, I think it's the male that has the pretty feathers. Um, it's the male that does the showing off. The females are not very pretty so that predators, you know, won't uh, bother them with their babies and the eggs and stuff like that. But this head ornament is absolutely gorgeous head ornament. And these go straight down onto the head each one of these little like a hat pin so uh, and then here's another feather and of course it will go out and And I, I've sort of been procrastinating with this one. It's been one of my favorite ones to want to do because I love the collars, of course. And I've been kind of procrastinating because <laughs> I'm thinking, I don't know if I can do all those feathers or not. But it'll be a challenge, right? It'll be a challenge for me. I think I can do it once I get started. I always, I'm always chicken uh, when it, right before I start, I get, I get like cold feet. And uh, <clears throat> so there's most of the bird that I think you can sort of see where I'm going now. So uh, yeah, I get real chicken right at first, you know, trying to get it going, but, but I just have to make myself get my colors out get my gouache out and let's let's get going on this thing it's mostly blues and greens and yellows and i have all of these colors in my gouache blue greens and yellows now there is um a little bit of 
black markings where my pencils are on all of these and i can still go over it with a fine tip marker which i've been known to do before and a highlighting but other than that and i think it's all on the this part is all of the black maybe a little highlight around the eye or something I've got a little bit of a gold brown in the eye, so I might use this gold. It's a, it's not gold, metallic gold. It's a goldenrod mustard color gold. And, uh, and in here is a peachy brown, so I might use this red brown really diluted down to get that color. But I'm going to have to do each color separate. It's not like I can put down a base collar and go up from up, up from it. I think I'm going to do each collar separately. So I'm, it's going to be all gouache this time. I don't see anything. It's got yellow, light blue, dark blue. It's got a, it's got a uh, kind of a dark red and a light red, which is probably this pinky collar. And then it's got a blue green and a brown, a dark brown, light brown which is this also this i don't see where the red is she's got a red tone right here on this color palette but i don't see any red in there uh, so i see the browns and i see this one here but i think that's more brown than red i don't see any red so i'm without further ado i'm just going to go ahead and get me some water and i'm going to use all my greens and i'm going to use all my blues and um my yellows and if i do need the red or the orange i can work on it later but that's all the colors I'm going to use. And so I'm going to use, this is my blue palette. And this one is my brown palette. And uh, I'll put, I can put something up here. Maybe my greens and yellows. So I've got three little water palettes going on. I and the peachy color she probably mixed with red. With something else to get those collars okay she probably did they've got a peachy collar in here but anyway we'll, we'll go we'll play it by ear deborah maybe it was one that dropped off no harm to the bird <laughs> she must have found a feather someone sent me a peacock feather in a journal earlier this week oh you're and she's vegan well, that doesn't mean you can't love feathers. I have I have a bag of feathers that came from my neighbor's chickens. And she picked them up off the ground. Well, I know you don't eat, Megan, but that doesn't mean you can't use a feather. Aww. I Maybe I don't understand. Okay, but that's okay, Deborah that's okay there's nothing wrong with what you're doing but the peacock feathers um uh, you can find them in the wild down here and it's like finding an eagle feather or a a red bird feather it's to admire the beauty i'm not eating the i'm not eating the bird i'm just admiring the bird vegan okay vegan <laughs> i'm from kentucky so it's it's hard to tell what comes out of my mouth so anyway i'm gonna go ahead and get started on the bird and i'm going to start with him i'm going to start with the bird so i'm going to get some of my dark collars out gotten my new brush thank you deborah Got my new brush, and I'm going to get some of this uh, watered down a little bit. 
and it looks like it's all of this shade. We'll see. But I don't think that uh, it's like a brush. This is animal hair, and and we use we love the animals. You know, we want them to grow their hair long so that we can borrow their hair. Um, I don't think it's wrong just because you don't want to eat them doesn't mean you don't want to love them. I, I, I'm going to have to look that up, Deborah. I'm going to have to look it up and, and find out uh, the rationale for it. I'm not vegan, but um, oh, and sometimes uh, sometimes things are are um, commercially made and you can't tell the difference between commercial things. So anyway, I am going to have a hard time with painting this and my paint. I'm going to have to find me another spot to um, put my paint because I want to see this bird. So I might have to put my paint over here. I got too much stuff. Let's see what I can do. Let's see what I can do over here. But um, yeah, I don't disrespect vegan. Uh, I don't respect it at all. I'm I'm very healthy in my food choices as well. And um, I try to be, um, uh, I try to be on a keto diet. And so I try not to eat overly processed foods, man-made foods. And I try to eat only fresh fruit and vegetables and fresh grass-fed meat and uh, fresh food. And uh, so, so I'm I'm uh, on a special diet as well. You only use synthetic brushes, okay, Deborah? Well, that's very interesting. I'm glad you shared. I'm glad you shared that, hun. Thank you. Um, it's amazing uh, what we learn. It's amazing. So anyway, I'm going to put this paint palette over here as soon as I find a spot for everything. I don't have a big enough table. And it has to be it has to be flat. <laughs> it has to lay flat. I can't have anything underneath my paint palette or my paint will drip. So let's try that. Okay. So here we go. Um, I'm going to go with my blues first. And um, this is up next to his, his beak. I'm going to go real slow for a little bit here. And then, see, he's got a lighter spot in the middle. So I'm just going to go around that middle with my brush. And go down. And it's real dark on his, under his chin, up in this area. And then it feathers out a little, no pun intended, it feathers out down to this side. It's darker on this side. So I definitely want to get that dark again. And this blue is probably one of my favorite blues.
And uh, there's a little bit on the his back. That's blue. And I want to make it really, really dark. So I might have to let this... Uh, I've got some water piled up here a little bit, and I have to let it dry so that it will stay the same dark value. And I can also go over it again if it's not dark enough. And so I'm going to go back down to over top of his nose again and get that darker. Okay. Um, I still want to get this a little darker, so I might have to let that dry. And I'm going to have to use full strength uh, of my gouache. I just barely touched it with my brush, and I'm and I'm I'm using full strength of it to get this darker value in the middle. And I might have to do a couple of coats. And it's not going to take long to paint this thing once I get going. So I'm going to let this dry. And I will go over it again. It's still not quite where I want it to be. But it's getting there. Okay. Now, I'm going to uh, um, use some of the watered down kind and get, get down on the rest of the bird. And this is watered down. It's not, it doesn't have as much collar in it for the rest of the bird. And it sort of fades out. To. Nothing. Something like that. And then this is a little bit of blue here. I'm just kind of working my way through it, talking to myself what I'm seeing. And um, <clears throat> and then this is light right here. And it is also a different shade. It's that beachy blue. I need to get some of that other blue in here. A different shade okay same thing up here with the hat pins I'm calling these his hat pins they have a real dark base and a light lighter top so I'm just going to paint them all the light color and then I will to keep uh, dabbing the darker value on the base of those pins uh, to get the uh, right shade.
and you know we got to go through an ugly stage to get through the pretty to the pretty stage right <laughs> we always have an ugly stage <laughs> first uh, we do okay that's good that's good I probably could have used some of my masking fluid in here to uh, cover up the white around his eye. But it's not too late. Dog alert. Sorry. Uh, but it's not too late to work on that. I do have some white gouache. And... Um, I think I'll be okay. I think I'll I'll try it without it this time. Um, the next thing I want to do is clean my brush. And I've got some green uh, around the eye. I'm just going to try the middle green. And it's a it, it is a turquoisey green, but I'm just going to uh, see what I can do. And I can tell you right now, I've got a little puddle, so I'm going to touch that up. That's okay. I can go back in. Here we go. And uh, we'll let that green dry. It's bubbled up, uh, you know, with water. So we'll let that dry and work on something else. That's what it's going to have to be. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit my blue. Um, I got in the middle of my, my uh, spots on the feathers. I'm going to use my, my light blue first. And color in the blues, and it's going to leave a bead of water, and that's going to be okay with me. I'm going to try to hit them. They, it kind of like a little blue bean, like a bean, like a a pinto bean. It's got a little bit of a or a jelly bean look to it. With a little dip. But the water stays right where I place it. The water is staying. And I guess as long as my paper is um, level, it will stay. It won't run, run off. The children are getting a little bit uh, rowdy. Abby is getting rowdy. Yes, Nora. Do you want to go outside? She's touching her nose to my leg. And that means she wants something. So, I've got uh, one, two, three. There's another one right here. Abby. Abbers. She's wanting to play. Okay, let me go let you out. I'm going to let these little blue bubbles dry. And I will come back and work on them again in just a second. Let the girls out. I like that. It's going, it's going, it's going to be good. Hang it, hang in there with me, girls. Come on. Where's your daddy? Where is your daddy? Honey, will you take the children out? They're distracting. She's going to take them out. Let the children go out. <laughs> so.
So, okay, what are y'all talking about? Cheryl, soon I'm going to try my hand at making my own hectograph. Hectograph. I have a half dozen commercial ones, but sometimes they are too big or too small. I was floored by the price of Knox gelatin. Oh, you're talking about like a jelly plate. Okay. I have seen uh, people on YouTube make jelly plates, and um, I've I've seen I've seen all kinds of them. And uh, Cheryl wrote me a poem, Peacock, Peacock, your colors are so bright. Beth, oh Beth, pay him just so right. <laughs> Give him some green and some blue. And it says, we will smile no matter what you do. Oh, Cheryl. <laughs> That is so cute. Thank you. We get it down. That is so cute. Peacock, peacock. <laughs> Cheryl, Cheryl is our little poet. Your colors are so bright. Thank you, Cheryl. He is. He's going to be good. You just wait till I get all these other colors in there. I've got to get let each one of these kind of like dry. So that is so cute, Cheryl. Thank you. That was a cute one. That one was really good. So. Let me go ahead and see what next I can do while this is drawing. And I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking I want to do a little bit more darkness here because I want this to stay blonde. I can maybe I can lift it up. See, I, I wet it, and I might be able to, there's a technique where you wet it and you lift off a little bit. Not much, but I did lift up some to get this variegation of lightness there. But I can also take and put some more blue down and just use the blue on my palette with another layer. Don't think that would be bad. And then I want to do a little bit of darkness up here. So I'm going to use the real full strength. Full strength. 
full strength and I'm going to the base of, I'm calling these my hat pins. And I'm holding my hand up with my other hand so that I don't put my hand in the wet spots. I've got my other hand here and I've got my arm laying on it on the table so I don't touch those <laughs> and that's good because I don't know that I could do it and keep a steady hand I like that I do like that and I I, I don't know if I'm going to do something that I have absolutely no idea if it's allowed. <laughs> of course, it's mixed media. Anything is allowed, right? But I'm going to take a toothpick. And I'm just going to use a, uh, this one's a yellow toothpick. I don't care what color it is. And, and I'm going to take and drag down on the hat pins and I'm going to use my hand technique here and I'm going to go down just a quarter of an inch or so each little uh, pin that's going down and I'm dragging the paint the dark paint down on to the pin the stick pin part of that hat pin and some of it is working and some of it's not. I don't have enough water on there to drag it down. But um, I, I don't know if I can paint with a stick, paint with a toothpick or not. Uh, and I'm trying to get that bat blue on the very tips of those pins with a toothpick I may not be able to do it with a toothpick I may need to do it with a felt tip and I do have some felt tip markers that Joe bought me in the fine tip but I'm going to show you this when I get down here and you can see some of them I did real good and I think I'm 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 getting my goal accomplished by using a toothpick. Uh, it's working. And then the rest of the pen will be uh, could be done in black. Oops. <laughs> Oops. It's all right. It's okay. It's working. It's going to work. I think I am going to quit though. But um, let's see if you can see what I've tried to do close up. All but that one little blob in the middle. <laughs> That's okay. We still have white. We can we could paint over it when that dries. I can paint over it with white. And I even have a white correction pen that I can use. It's 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 white paint. So that's good. That's all right. I, I think we're getting we're getting there. And then the rest of it would be done with an with a pen. So uh, check that out. 
from a distance, it's going to be just fine. I think it will. Let me see my other pen. This is a fine point pen. I might be able to use some of this. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. I just had a drink. Okay. And I can outline this bird with this blue one. This is an extra fine, ultra fine point permanent marker. So once it dries, it will, it won't run or anything is what I'm saying. And it's blue. So we are color coordinated. And I'm going to go ahead and do my tail feathers, the ones that are up close. And I'm going to go ahead and do all of them. Okay. 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 And then there's some more over here.
nice. And then there is a, a nostril. And his eye. Very good. Moving along good. I'm doing each one of these um, eye spots in the the spots in the in the feathers that make that peacock design and marking the outer perimeter of that and it's like a circle around a jelly bean that makes that design in the peacock popular like that and it's coming along and this is a permanent ink so i will uh i can paint over top of this and it won't run just make sure it's dry real good and then i can i'm going to go out and do the feathers um I, I want to do each one of the feathers with a marker like this, but I don't want it to be as dark. I never thought I was going to be using these markers. I had no idea. I know it. Thank you, Deborah. I just, it is amazing. I'm just, I'm just blooming here. So what I want to do is I do have some lighter tones. I still want to use my green, my paint, but I want to do some more outlining with these permanent markers. And I think I'm going to go into the lightest. Uh, the, there's a light gray. There is a light blue. And there's a medium blue. Don't know if I need the medium blue, but in the fine point. In the fine points and that's what I'm interested in right now is the fine points I'm not interested in the regular markers uh, but I've got some green fine points and look at the different shades even yellow I don't know if I need the yellow or not but I might use it as a couple of little uh, highlights when I do these these tail feathers so i might use that and but but there's an olive i don't i don't even know if they have names on these guys or not i don't see any names on them it just says fine tip ultra fine point marker so the collar of the lid is the collar that you got. So you can make up your own collars. But you see there's a there's a light green and a olive green. And these greens are perfect for my for my peacock. I don't know if I'm going to be able to use this one because I've used other dark colors from my gouache. But I do like the light blue. But I've already outlined it in the darker blue. So I don't even know if I need this light blue or not. I don't see a use for it right this second. I don't see a use for this one. I want to use my light blue gouache. And I want to use uh, this peachy color. Which to me 
is more of a brown. I, maybe I can use the lightest value of this uh, red brown and put just a touch of red in it to give it that peachy look. That'd be about the only thing I can think of. And I do already have some brown in the plate. So this brown might be enough leftover brown from another project and just go across the red one little time. Just maybe a little bit of a, a moisture on the corner of that brush. That's all the red I have. And I'm going to put it in with this brown and see if it gives me that peachy. I might have to come up with my own peach, you know. Uh, if it's not uh, peachy enough, I could even add a little orange to it, you know. See what it'll do. And I can even add some yellow to it. But I think uh, that's getting close to what I want to have. It's, a, it's just that I, I can't use a whole lot of it. I want to use a littler brush. So I'm going to use this collar because I mixed it up. And But I want to use a real tiny brush. And I have one. Like right here. This is one of the ones I conditioned. <laughs> it's got a bent tip. Let's see if I can find another one without a bent tip. This one doesn't have a bent tip, and it's a brand new brush. So let me use this one. Let me use this one. And I'm going to go in. Uh, I'm going to go to the outer rim and use this reddish brown, peachy brown. And I'm trying to decide. I think I'm going to go with more red. Why not? Make it red. Let's make them vibrant. <laughs> so as you can see, I added a lot more red with this brown. I'm mixing it up. I think it would look good with the blues to use this this it's you can see it's faded it's not a vibrant red it's a faded red and it may even have a little bit of a, a peachy orange tint to it and i'm going to put this on the outer rim of my spot I'm, I, it's not, I don't think it's bright enough. I want it bright. I do like it. And it's more orangey. Than red. It's our bird. We can make it as red as we want. I'm going with the redder, the redder tone. I'm using it almost full, full strength without the water. I'm going for it, guys. I think it's going to make it pop and I think it's going to be good. Test it first. <laughs> I'm going rogue, Cheryl. I'm going rogue. <laughs> I know it's going to be right. I am brave and I I'm just I'm just sure that I want a red. I do have it toned down just a little bit but not really it's full strength whatever the collar is on the gouache it's called ver vermilion vermilion red is what it's called in the gouache paint <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
<laughs> we are painting a peacock. Okay, let me get some more. We did not have much weather with the the uh, the the hurricane was a tropical storm for me. It was the the wind was very low. It slowed it slowed down. It was also further out to see right where we live. And I got absolutely hardly any weather from just a little bit of gusts, gussy winds during the night, Sunday night. And by Monday, it was all the way up towards Jacksonville, two hours north of us. And it kind of went, it was closer to the shore up there than down here. I go in. So uh, there was just a touch of higher winds in Jacksonville and then by the time it got up to Charleston and South Carolina it started picking up again and it kind of got stronger winds as it went to shore in Wilmington North Carolina which is right on the North and South Carolina border uh, to Virginia Beach and Richmond area and it was considered a hurricane one when it hit shore there. It picked back up, the speed picked back up when it hit that warm water up there in Wilmington. Uh, the water was warm and it picked, it, it sort of formatted a, an eye and got strong again. And they categorized it as a hurricane one. And then it, when it went on to landfall at that point, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 95% sure it slowed back down a tiny bit and went back down to a tropical wind force. But there was a lot of hurricanes, I mean, um, tornado whipping winds, gusting winds, and a lot of rain that caused a lot of flooding through the whole area up in there. And I think they were more worried about the floodings than they were about just about anything else. The floodings, the water, because there's a lot of low-lying area there and a lot of uh, little, little rivers and uh, waterways, waterways up in there, up in that area in Wilmington. Um, a lot of waterways up in there where they go fishing and boating and a lot of that was flash flooded where it rained so much in so little of a time and uh, we had a chance of uh, flash flooding but again it we didn't get it 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 where I live, we were spared. We were spared where I live. And uh, so uh, today we had a thunderstorm. And I'm not sure if it was from, it might have been from an outer band of the hurricane. And we had a lot of lightning and rain. But we this this that's kind of normal for our area to have storms like that. And... Um, we, uh, I didn't lose power, but something blinked. Uh, the power did blink, and I had to uh, reset all of my internet devices. My phone, my iPad, uh, my TV, my TV, uh, not only the TV, but the devices that hook up to the TV had to be reboot. Everything had to be reset. And uh, uh, so, uh, but no big deal. No big deal. So. <laughs> uh, I'm online. 
Rebecca. Rebecca uh, from Rebecca Creates wants to join our tag, uh, our tag swap. And she just sent me a message. What's the deadline? <laughs> so I was going to get her to come in here and we can tell her. We can tell her the deadline. The deadline is the end of the month. <laughs> Cheryl is going to the green chair. Chair, did you ever find your needle? Cheryl lost a needle the other day. So anyway, I like this. And I am going uh, to go around these, these eyes with uh, some more blue. And uh, I want a dry brush. And I want, these are kind of, I'm calling them my blue jelly beans right now. <laughs> the needle is still missing. Oh my gosh. Cheryl. Sit softly. Sit softly. <laughs> Carry a magnet. It could be anywhere. I got some uh, baskets for my mom. And, uh, and some of them had sewing stuff in it. And there were pins, stick pins, and, and needles and threads and things in the bottom of a basket. And that's not good. <laughs> Because the baskets, you know, a needle could go through the, the weave of a basket. They sure can. So anyway, I'm trying to do the blue eye of the feather. Is that Would that be good? Eye of the feather? Is this the eye of the feather? They have this little dark value in the middle. I'm making it really, really uh, the full strength blue. And this is uh, ultramarine blue. Read above, read above, read above. Uh, some of our crafters are getting power back on. Oh, great. Teresa says, going rogue, rogue, and then you need to add gold or purple. Okay. <laughs> okay, Ch Teresa. Ch twist my arm, Teresa. Twist it. Twist it hard. Okay, I'll do gold and purple. Okay. Yes. A little purple would be cool in here. So she didn't come in. So I guess I have to reply. August. Uh, I guess I'll just say August 30th. Uh, but anyway, um, I like to watch Rebecca. Rebecca creates. She, um, uh, she videos Monday through Friday in the morning, like 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. And she usually stays on for three or four hours. <laughs> Twisting my arm. Okay. And I do have some of um, my, uh, my, my Nuvos. I got this. That's a yellow one. I think these will be cool on here, too. I've got green. I got almond. I've got yellow. I don't have blue, though. I am going to be really, really, really sorry that I didn't find any blue in this stuff. This is a rose gold. And wait, there's more. And then I have a goldy bronze. But I'm thinking, I, I'm with you, Cheryl. Uh, I have also metallic uh, purple. Do I have metallic? And also have that dragon. Uh, I've got dragon stuff. The dragonfly. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking that the purple, uh, 
I know exactly what you mean. This blue needs a little bit of a purple shade to it. And I can add, let me go ahead and put some water in my purples. And let them get soft. Calypso. Woohoo! Going for the gold. I'm looking for the gold. Uh, purple. Do I have metallic purple? I've got this. Got to move the pencils. Pencils are in the way. But I do have this. This is called Glitter Glue Royal Blue. That might do good. Hi, Joe. Well, hi. How are We're you? We're looking for the gold. Looking for the gold. <laughs> Hey, hey. Or silver. What about silver? Little sister Sherry's crafting. I got metallic. Hi, Teresa. I don't. I don't think I have any purple metallics that I see. And where's my dragonfly? This Gold is gold in the purple. This is look at this. Well, just, would you just look at that? Dragon glaze. Wow. I think between the silver and the dragon glaze, we got it made in the shade. Miss Joyce Burring. I'm gonna put some light on the subject. Oh, oh my gosh. <coughs> How you doing, Joycey? Joe gave me the light switch. <clears throat> I Candace. Me. I was gonna say hi to y'all earlier, but I thought Beth needed to get warmed up. She's kind of been been in second gear. So anyway, I am going to <laughs> <laughs> Add some more green to my eye. I'm just going to bounce. I'm just bouncing right now. I'm wow. using all of Joe's Sharpies that he gave How me. How are they? They're wonderful. How are they? Mm -hmm. You need to put a little bit of a pretty smile on that peacock's face. Just give me a minute to work on them. Just give me a minute. Kind of look like he's got them. I'm not, the, I'm not even beginning to be halfway done yet. It looks like it's got a grub worm out in the garden. Well, you know, it has to go through the ugly stage first before it oh. gets to the pretty stage. Oh, until he can spread his wings and make beautiful colors. He's, <laughs> Teresa said, he he's smirking at you. He is smirking. It kind of looks like a an alien. You're so sweet, Teresa. Oh, Joe loves all of y'all. Don't you fret, man. <laughs> Suzanne Hale, how are you? Hi, Suzanne. Did you wake up? She sleeps. <laughs> she likes to sleep. You can come over here. Beth sleeps I all sleep day. Too. She has to. I got all my days and nights mixed up. I know. I'm up all night and I sleep all day. <laughs> she ain't lying either. <laughs> she says, oh, he said that like he really needs it. <laughs> <laughs> There's Deborah Brown. You better say hello to Deborah. Miss Deborah Brown. She's, Come she's, on down. She's one of my newest. Uh, awesome artist. She is. I've seen some of her work and it's awesome. She does a lot of uh, of uh, graphic type art. Would you say that, Deborah? You do graphic designing? I think so. Yep, and there ain't nothing about Joyce being boring. No, Joyce is not boring. She's not boring at all. Nope. She's my girl. I like She's her. So sweetie. Just 
Yeah, still missing one I haven't seen. Uh oh, who's not in there? Ah. I got uh, 20. There's 20 of them. I know. Who is he missing, girls? Mm hmm. Y'all better come out of the woodwork and, and say hi. I know. All you lurkers in there, better come say hi to Joe. <laughs> he wants to say hi to you. Uh, search for the G. Oh, Giovanna? Giovanna. Giovanni usually comes in. Yeah. And, oh, uh, go, oh, Glenda. Glenda. Uh -huh. Glenda, yeah. Of course, I didn't. She's here. She was okay. here first thing Earlier. when she was here. First one in one of the first ones in the room. I'm sorry, I missed oh, it, Glenda. There's Kendra. Hi to you. Hi, Kendra. Hey, Kendra. Yeah. How was your therapy today? <coughs> oh, I hope you're doing better, Kendra. She's got a long road, but she's all pulling for you. But today. she's rooting. She's 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 uh she's persevering. And see if these markers aren't enough, I can always go to the pen dry my my prayer. Oh, Sharon Lombard, come on down. <coughs> Susan. <coughs> these are taking my breath. There's Giovanni. Here she comes. And Candy. <laughs> Candace. Candace. Candy Candace. Mm-hmm. Kinder. Where's Kinder? Yep. Kinder's in there too. Yep. Kinder calls. So anyway, I'm I'm um uh, I'm going into some Getting some values going on in here. <laughs> I love saying that word. Like, sounds like I I know art. Yeah. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> Thank you, Joe, for buying Beth the Sharpies. That was awesome. Beth, I work in all kinds of media. Whatever inspires me at the time. My kind of girl. Me too. I'm going rogue with these magic markers, and I'm going to probably. Uh, before it's over with, get into my Premier uh, pencils. My Prisma. My Prisma collar pencils. Mm-hmm. Just give me one more moment. I even put a little bit of yellow in that red. Okay, I'm going to try to um, do the light blue around the dark blue and it's going to be this color blue maybe I better put some white in it <laughs> I don't know about that Tracy what'd she say B R B. Oh, she didn't have Joe to bring her a drink the way you bring me drinks. You're nice, Joe. They're saying that you're nice. Oh. Thank you, ladies. There you go. I appreciate it. Where's Lizzie? Lizzie All Brewer, right, Elizabeth Brewer's in the house. Woohoo! How are you? I gotta tell you, girls, something. We um, we watch YouTube all the time. <laughs> I like to watch YouTube all the time. Joe likes to watch westerns and things like that, and and I'm always when he leaves the room, I flip it back over on YouTube, and. Uh, <laughs> And I found, and he was uh, working on his lawnmower. So we have this one guy that we like to watch. 
and he's a he's a lawnmower repair man, and he is more than a lawnmower repair man. He is a lawnmower comedian. No, he's a lawnmower uh, genius. This guy oh, cool. is a lawnmower genius. He can take any lawnmower apart and he can put it back together and make it better than it was. Any year. But but he is a comic. <laughs> so he has uh he he has a particular style of when he films and he has a character that he plays and he plays a hillbilly. And I don't know I used to know where he lived and I don't know if it's if it's in Georgia or Alabama. I have no clue, but he lives he lives in the hills and he and he acts like a hillbilly and he he talks funny on purpose and he he's always making funny. Joyce is pterodactyl. Terry. His name is Terrell. Terrell. Terrell Dactor. And yeah. he is the funniest thing we have ever seen. And we love watching him. And, but the thing of it is, is he gets down to this, the part of re actually repairing the, the lawnmower too. And he'll take an old antique lawnmower and he'll tell you where to find the parts and he'll tell you the numbers yeah. of the parts. But he stays in character. And he wears those buck teeth. <laughs> Billy Bob. Buck the teeth. Billy Bob buck, buck teeth that you have, find. And <laughs> and on top of that, he always has a little story. His he's got a nephew and another couple of buddies that work with him that help him stream. And they they come in character and they come into his garage like it's a store. You know, say, hey, do you have an extra blade for my lawnmower? You know, and 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 they'll go, why? Well, you want one? <laughs> you know, I mean, they'll just they're just cards. They they and then he will tear down and show you how to sharpen a blade, and he'll be really really serious. He's really good. He's and then the good. other and then the other guy will come back at the end of the show and finish up the drama part of the story. So it's a storyline, and it's 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 fabricated in a fabulous way and it and, and i'm just saying you, you have to sort of watch him a couple times to understand what i'm trying to tell you but he tells a story but he also has this drama in the background <laughs> and he's always got a nephew that comes in that takes his chips and his soda and he calls it uh chippers chippers and uh, slippers Slipper. oh his name is slippers because he yeah. wears house slippers He's, so he comes yeah. in with a different pair of house slippers every day and then um and then he uh he always eating his pop and is getting in his refrigerator and eating his chippos he, he calls his potato chips chippos and so he's got you know all this funny you I, i'll tell him I'll, you you need to get get that started joyce is, uh, he could be from tennessee because uh, he's uh, he's around about that way between yeah. Tennessee and he's West somewhere. Virginia. Yeah, he's up there somewhere. Or Kentucky. Mm -hmm. South, uh, South Kentucky. But uh, he, he is he's an extremely good mechanic, and his father was a mechanic, and his boys working with him, and they call him Junior, and he's he's got buck teeth too, just like his dad. And they wear wigs and, under their yeah, hats. They wear wigs. They wear suits. Uh, Terrell Dactor, Terrell, T-E-R-A-L, Dactor, D-A-C-K-E-R, Terrell Dactor, and uh, he's been on YouTube for many years. Yeah, he's cool. I love him. And we he, love him. Uh, he went to, uh, uh, last night, he, we watched when he went to Louisville, uh, Kentucky. For a convention. At, at the convention center of the... Uh, lawnmowers and tractors association and all that and i mean he got that there was people there <laughs> and slippers was yeah. there and he's dressed up like a gangster so every time he got close to a table he, the, the music would go do it like the shark music and he yeah. would and then he act like he was stealing something from the table and it was the freebies that they give you and he <laughs> was stealing the freebies 
like he was really stealing them. He didn't and know he, it was free. And, yeah. and he was acting really dumb and stupid and silly. But in the end, they had a whole bunch of freebie stuff. Yeah. It was just funny. Just funny. Good, clean fun. Just good, clean fun. Yeah, that's stupid, good, good clean fun. Stupid. Good you need to fix fun. your riding lawnmower? Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. All you got to do is look, uh, send it, send him an email or something. He'll, he'll get right on it. He might already special have it. Mm -hmm. Special request. Yeah, he's he's done over, I think three hundred. Well, we don't know that, but he's 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 probably done it. But anyway, Joe was fixing his lawnmower, and you found it, didn't you? Did he do it? Yeah. Or did another guy a, do he it? He had a nineteen, a nineteen forty seven or thirty seven weed eater on a, a lawnmower with the open face weed eater at the front, and he rebuilt the whole thing from. And it was it was a uh, he can weld and fabricate yeah, and it do was anything. an old very old one and uh, he uh rebuilt last uh, the other day he rebuilt a wash machine motor he was talking about and he always kind of makes fun of oddball things and he says you know i just can't imagine uh somebody having a wash machine with a, a, a half horsepower motor on it with a kick start like a motorcycle yeah, it was an old-fashioned washing machine with a kickstart. And they used to be like that. I remember my uh, grandfather had one in his garage. Jar Does anybody remember a kickstart washing machine? I want to know how many of y'all have ever seen a kickstart. You kick it like you would kick a motorcycle. It's got a pedal on the front of it, and you push down on it. To get it started. Gasoline the run. Gasoline, and it's about, a, it's gasoline, about three quarter horsepower to one horse. Gasoline run uh, washing machine. It was amazing. Yeah. I'd never seen it before. I, I, I always wanted my grandfather to leave that to me. But I was, you know, I mean, I was like five years old. It was something neat that I'd never seen before. And anyway, when he finishes his work. Oh. Uh, Teresa's grain and have one. Okay. There you go. There you go. But when he is finished with the project, and he always he always is successful with whatever he repairs, he says, <laughs> "And there's your dinner." And he points to you, and he squeaks squeaks up one eye and leaves one eye open, and he has those buck teeth in his mouth, yeah. and he goes, "And there's your dinner." Yeah. Every time he 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 shows somebody how to fix a motor or something, he he goes, and that's his last call is. There's your dinner. Yeah, Joyce, my mom, she's 88 years old, and uh, she can do a lot of little things, but she's she's running her her engines leaking oil or something. <laughs> she's uh she's not doing too good, but she likes to get out there and still ride that lawnmower when she can. She gets upset when she can't do it because for some reason, not even an eye can cut her grass the way she likes it she likes doing her own work she likes she likes it the way she likes it but we we don't watch him all the time we just watch him just when, well we have to get a fix yeah, every now and then yeah I'll get a, a fix <laughs> and then we watch this other guy and he lives up in maine and he he is just like Terrell, except He's not jokey. He doesn't take telling jokes, but he can fix anything. And he's albino. Oh yeah. He's got blonde white hair. He's a he's a towhead, and uh, and he usually wears a hat so you don't see it. And uh, he is smart as a tack. He can he can fix any kind of engine motor. He is a uh, up north. Rebuild. Somewhere. Yeah, he's like in Maine. Yeah, New it's, Hampshire, it's maybe New Hampshire, New Hampshire. but. Uh, we like watching him too, but he cuts his he, he and they all go out with the new lawnmowers and cut their grass and see how it works. <laughs> Joyce said she at sixty seven she needed to become a mechanic <laughs> to fix things. You just at sixty seven you almost just need a mechanic just to help. Yeah, you. yeah. But Terrell Dactor, he is so funny, and they they talk like hillbilly hicks. But but then he gets serious about the motor. 
Lizzie says Bub is the uh, uh, she's got the the link to the more man. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. All you got to all you really got to do is just go to YouTube and say, "I want to know how to put a wheel on a on a riding mower or, or my riding mower." The mower this, fixers. Or, okay, Liz. Liz with Brewer says there's the mower fixers. Okay. <laughs> the mower fixers. Google that. Yeah. But uh, we like Terrell for the for the uh, entertainment part. <laughs> and he's got this this music he plays in the background is is it's it's, uh, it's from bluegrass. Way, yeah, it's, it's way like back in somewhere. He'll he'll be like this. You can't you can't hear it, but it's yeah, in the background. It's in the background. And then when it, something exciting comes on, he's got the big. The don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Hang on a minute, Joyce. Oh. I'll look for it. The mower fixers. Rabbit trail. Taking a break. I need a break. The mower fixers. So, yeah. There's the mower mechanic. Medic. More medic. <laughs> There's a mower's song. I want to. I want to listen to the song. Wow. You get in shape. Did you know that? I couldn't imagine. Oh, nope. it's a Japan song. Going from electric to uh, or from uh, Willis. It's a Jap Japanese song. We want the mower fixers. The lawn mowing wrap. We got a rapper. For the first time. Wow. Long yeah. more song. Just a minute. I'm still looking. Well, it's really hard to believe that people, you know, when you when you think about it, though, you when I watch my westerns and stuff, they all most of those have candles and these big shiny pots that put out a a glare off of a candle or a light or some kind of a, you know, things and you like to see. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I'm sharing. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, Hang that, on. I don't want to get in trouble. That's his, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble. You know, it's not bad. Hang on. I know, but you're not, you get rights okay. if you play things. Oh, okay. But that's the, the, the twang. Let me find me. Dong, 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 dong. Where am I? I should be live. Yeah. Where am I? There I am. I got yeah. Terrell's. Just there a minute. I, am. Oops. I got Terrell's. Just there a minute. Address. <laughs> I can I can put his address in. That's for the Terrell doctor. Okay, his name's Terrell, like Terry, but Terrell with an L. So, and let me look for. I I couldn't find the the mower fixers. More mechanic. So more she fixers. said, mower fixers. Oh, Teresa's got it in there. Okay, sweetie. Thank okay. you, guys. Yeah. Well, uh, probably not, Liz. Wait a minute, Liz. Try to, uh, Liz. I made you a monitor, so go ahead and put your link in now for Joyce. Joyce, that's okay. Okay. People come and go through the thing. See, I got 24 thumbs up. Joe was looking at the numbers. <laughs> I don't look at the numbers. Uh, so there you go. And uh, Joyce, jo Joyce, Liz will give it to you now. Uh, I made her a monitor so she can post a link. 
sometimes if you're not a monitor, you're not allowed to post the link. And so there you go there. But I gave you the what I gave you is Terrell's Terrell Bactors. Yeah. So let me get my um, I'm going to turn. I'm going to do what Cheryl told me to do and turn my page upside down. <laughs> give you a better a better view of your perspective. Well, I'm going to do my feathers this way. Oh. So um, they're going to start here. Uh -huh. Just be careful and don't ruffle your feathers. Yes, Jer. I won't ruffle my feathers. Or mine. No, no, no. You can ruffle mine. I don't care. Well, we sure are glad we had better weather today. I hope you all didn't get into any of that storm last night. That was that was horrible. I think it's still probably headed up toward uh, New York or thereabouts. Yeah, New York lost the power. Janice lost power. I called my mama first thing this morning and told her, I said, Mom, you did a great job last night praying. She said, well, I was up half the night. And I said, well, it didn't even rain two Pardon. inches of water in, in my rain cup. So I know. Well, the pool's full. Yeah, but that, that was from today. Yeah. Yeah, the pool's full. Pool. I don't know where that storm burst come from. It's an outer band somewhere. Yeah, I had some friends that was going back up to New York City this week too, but uh, I'm not the best feather maker, but I'm trying. I'm not done either. So give me a few more minutes. Wow. This is right out. Uh, Candace says she lives right outside of New York City. Oh, okay. Well, we got a couple of New Yorkers in here. Mary Berry lives inside New York City, and Janice Baum lives in the state yeah, of New York. That's what, yeah, Teresa said that. Janice Baum, I yeah, think she was a, but she she lost her power today. She had one of the trees went down. Yeah, she had a big tree. I saw that. I showed it too. To oh, okay. I showed yeah. it at the beginning of this show. Yeah. Well, now there's the one green. I'm going to put it up and get another green. I just hope none of them get stormed out by high waters that's that's yeah that horrible. that was the thing we were talking about too uh there's a lot of low-lying areas up there and uh they could get some water Joyce Byrne, uh boys near trenton she lives in tennessee trenton, if we tennessee. ever go to tennessee i want to go see joyce Got coal mine to her house. She might. Coal mine road. I've got several people in Tennessee. This storm was bad, bad, bad. Yep. Oh, Ruth and Tammy and check in on them. Yeah, Teresa's. Needs to call Ruthie and Tammy. She said, "You better. You got. I got you down." Yeah, I want to go up to Bessemer, and uh, I want to go up through uh, Georgia and uh, Alabama and Tennessee. That's kind of like right up the middle. And then when I come back down, I'll come down and hit Charlotte, and I've got somebody next to Charlotte I want to see. And then I might hit Becky. Uh, Becky lives in South Carolina. Hi, Nancy. I can map everybody out on a map and and uh, map it out. 
but I think we're going to start going west. Joe wants to go west. Are we going to get an RV? Oh, we might. Might have to do that. Well, if we get an RV, I probably would be more apt to go. Don't worry. I'll see that we swing by your all's house. Don't worry. Don't fret. Don't fret, man. We're going to go see Norma. Yeah, we'll go to Branson. I've never been to Branson, Missouri. I've, my mom, my mom, that's all she it. says before she died. You all need to go to Branson. You need to go to Branson. Yes, mom, I know. Go to Branson. Go to Branson. It's okay, Nancy. You're not late, honey. No, Anytime. we're still. Hey, I'm still working on the peacock. I can't even tell that I'm using this marker. Yeah, but I'm going to go ahead and can you? Okay. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say uh, this one here on the the main, main porters is, is a lot lighter. It looks like it's smeared. It's got some, like, uh, you know that smeary paint you use? God, Joe, you sound terrible talking like that. Well, that's smear. It's, what's that called? It's smear it with your thumb. You're talking about my rubs? Yeah, the rub. It's called a rub. I'm sorry. Excuse me. All right. After you've been talking about, you know, food, I could have remembered to rub, put the rub on. Anyway, that's all I'm going to use of this one. It's a gray one. I might need a little bit more gray. Deborah Brown. Up oh, here. Oh. Mike got out and fine chunk. Got out the fine china. We're going to have some company. <laughs> paper paper plates for me. That's all I need. We got fine china paper plates. Well, see, the way I figured it is if we get an RV, then uh, I can fix y'all lunch on the RV and y'all come on the RV with us and sit for a spell. That's what I was figuring. That way you all don't have to clean up your, your craft room. <laughs> you like mine better than the original? Oh, thank you. I'm getting real good around his face. I put gray around it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do his eye next. I got to do his eye. Um, I've sort of switched from, from uh, gouache to markers. And uh, sure, I, I got a buddy goes up to goes up to uh, Ohio, Clanton, Ohio, all the way up Chicago, crosses over, goes over New York, comes back down through PA almost every week in a big eighteen wheeler, and then he goes, then he goes from there to, to Miami to, to yeah, all the way to Miami. Woo. Matter of fact, last week was one of his worst weeks he said he's ever had. And uh, he lost the pump on his, uh, uh, what pump was that? Pump on his big, on his uh, the tractor itself. Uh, then he was pulling the big reefer tr truck. And uh, he almost never got back. He had stayed. That's the name of the truck. It's not the name of the medication. <laughs> That's uh, what it's called. Yeah. It's a refrigerated box. And it stays very cold. Very cold. Yeah, that looks good. See, you're taking away all them striking points. You guys got to give me just a little bit more time to work on these things. I can well, we only... can't talk all night. That's why I've I said got, you need I've to got, paint. I've got things to do here, Joe. You're you're uh, wasting my time. Oh, wow. Well, sure. She said, yeah, say the prayers for my daughter and just told her that her mother-in-law, oh, her mother-in-law. Oh, Nicole, no. She's in her Wow. Series. She's got Alzheimer's, she's too. And wrap it on. Let's so call. sorry. We'll pray for her, Teresa. Don't worry about that, baby. 
what did I do with that nice little brush that I had earlier? I keep losing my napkin. I'm using markers and gouache. On this bird. You got any walnut stain? Right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> you say you had a nut sitting beside you? <laughs> <laughs> a peanut. Uh, I'm just a peanut, not a walnut. You're in the peanut gallery. Yeah, yeah. It gives it flair. It's coming along. It's coming along. I want to put a little more, more collar in here yet. I got to get some blue going in there. And I might have to use my uh, magic marker. Uh, yeah, fill those in. Thank you, honey. I'm glad you approve. I'm just checking you. I don't want to tell you tomorrow when I watch it. Oh, I hate it when he does that. He says, you know what you should have done? And I said, no, I don't need to know what I should have done. I can tell you what I did do. I done did. <laughs> don't tell me what I should have, could have done. I done did it. I hate it when he does that to me. Well, I just have to tell you. I don't want to hear that. The dogs can't talk. They don't. That's good. <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah. Ooh. Just, she, Teresa's uh, husband's mom. Had dementia also, and she died three years ago. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Love on your moms, guys. That's all I can say. Write them a card today. If you can't go see them, send them a card. Do do something. Send them some love. It's uh, it's hard when you lose your lose your families this is this is I like this now I'm going to put a little bit more blue and I've still got <clears throat> I still got some more um, um, I still got some more things to do on this so just Bear with me. I want to get, um, I guess maybe this pin. I haven't used this one yet. And I'm going in here now. <clears throat> Can you tell? Yeah, I could tell. Not too much. Okay. I think yours is better than the uh, than the picture because you they, there's nothing there except for you can't see nothing. Yours is more 
identifying colors. I like that better than that one. Identifying colors. Yeah, the, the colors are. Is that a technical term? They're 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 more clear. The colors are more clear than the light blue, and, and then a peach and a light, a little bit more light blue. You got circles and. Maybe that's uh, for somebody who don't wear glasses or something. I don't know. I'm we, making it. Because when I put own. my bifocals on, I can see the change of the colors. Uh huh. You know. For my readers, I don't wear bifocals right now. Which hasn't passed the right. Oh my god. I'm so sorry for Lizzie. 54 a young age. Alzheimer's. This is almond. <clears throat> Tracy said your picture is so more detailed. It's so more detailed. And she loves yours better. That's exactly what I meant, Tracy. I'm with you, babe. Hang on. And she said there's love put into yours. Absolutely. All kinds of love. Love, love, love. That sounds like a love, love, love. Da, 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 love. That's a Beatles song. Yeah, Beatles. You just wait. It ain't over yet. I ain't a singing yet. Just trying to sing. Yeah, buddy. Did you eat your dinner? Yep. Here's your dinner. The same with the way you wanted me to make it. What's that? <laughs> with the pork and beans. Did you eat it with the pork and beans? Yep. Tasted great. He put some hamburger in the crock pot. <clears throat> so he always puts things in it that I don't want him to put in. So I told him not to put anything in it. And so when I got up and looked at it, I put a little bit of marinara sauce in it, marinated sauce, and just a, maybe one, two tablespoons of hot sauce, of uh, dip, you know, the, the picante sauce. It wasn't really hot. It was mild. And <clears throat> that's all I put in it. And he says, can I put some mushrooms in it? And I told him, yes. <coughs> and I think that's all he did. <coughs> and it turned out to be really, really good. And I told him the other day, I fixed him baked beans. 
And I said, don't put the baked beans in the sauce. I said, because I can't eat baked beans. That's the first time she's made baked beans and probably. Three, I made them for him. I didn't years. make them for me. I made them for him. And and so uh, I said, but get you a bowl, a little bowl of baked beans and put some of that sauce, the hot dog, hamburger sauce in your baked beans. I said, it'll be like a chili. And that's what he did. So he had a nice dinner with cheese. Of course, he put cheese on it, no doubt. Of course. Of course. Rolled up in a. And a burrito. And a burrito. Me and a Mexican. Flour wrap. Yeah. Flour wrap. Yep. Okay. I think we're winding down here on these little stragglies. Cheryl, we eat pork chops and, and uh, cabbage and, and uh, all that. Just fried in a skillet all a Ste lot. Steamed. Steamed. Yeah. I do stir fries a lot. Rice, veggies. Not necessarily rice. Uh, can't have rice on my diet, but uh, I have been known to put rice in it. I, I like that dirty rice. It's got kind of got a flavor to it. They're a little different. Grainy. Yeah. You take white rice and you boil it down to nothing. Then okay, you, I'm liking that. I think it needs some right here. I can see more on the screen than I can with my eyes. And maybe right here. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Now, I'm going to use a little bit of blue no. i gotta have a little bit more blue Fill that in there just a little bit <clears throat> no the other side see how it goes all the way down the back of its plume is that called a plume it's, no it's a it's a feather oh that's one of those las vegas girl things Okay, so then I want to do a little bit of blue again. Ooh, yeah. You Sauerkraut like that? Sauerkraut. Oh. In the slow cooker. Pork roast. Ooh. That's two, three days of food for dinner. How's that look, Joe? Yeah. More yeah, blue. Looks, I looks think it good. needs more blue in it. No, they don't. It's, it's the the pineapple of the pineapple. Yeah. Of the NBC bird. Do do do. No, it's not the NBC peacock. Yeah, I, I can. Uh, I like cabbage, steamed cabbage. Occasionally, we'll do it the other way. We'll get some of those. When I do a stir fry, I will fry my meat in, in bite size. I fry it hard, either chicken or beef or pork. I fry it hard, and then I, I turn the heat down after it's browned on both sides. Turn the heat off down to low, and I will add a cup of water, and I will put a little bit of chicken bouillon in the water. And then on top of that meat in that little bit of water, I will just lay any kind of vegetable I have, whether it's beets, squash, zucchini, Celery, carrots, I could do potatoes, um, broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage, and, and do several wedges of cabbage, cabbages on top, and then I put the lid on, and that steams, and then I put a little bit of pink salt on it. Yeah. Uh, the pink salt is a, is, is a, has a better, has a different flavor than your regular household salt, it's not, and, yeah, it's and not. I highly recommend it, and, um, 
and then I might put a little bit of Italian seasonings on over top of that and then I put the lid on it and let it stew let it steam it steams and uh, that's what I do yeah every time sure do you know what she always makes it on Wednesday I don't know what that means girls but y'all figure that out for me okay <laughs> So there's enough left over for Thursday, so I don't have to cook before my show. <laughs> I don't like to cook on the days I work. Oh, I know. The garbage I man, have to work on the, those days. The garbage man comes on Friday, so she makes that on Wednesday. How's that look? That's wonderful. It really does. I just think he needs a little more. Yeah, there, that's a blue that you want it. Hey, that looks good. I think yours look better than that one. Anyway, on the neck, but uh, okay. We'll work with that. You can work with that? Yep. I think I'm done. Pink Himalayas. Sea salt. Yeah, yeah that's it's what I use. It's good for you. Yeah, it is good. It's got a better, it's got a good flavor to it. And if you've never tried it, please do. It is so worth it. You don't need as much. Now, if you wash that sauerkraut, Cheryl, really wash it good. It'd take a lot of that bitterness out of it. Uh, rinse it. Because I know sometimes they put, I like, I like um, uh, vinegar in sauerkraut and stuff. But, you know, I know if you, if you do wash your, your sauerkraut really good and you, you know, you can get, there's a difference too. If it comes in the bag or if it comes in the, the bottle, uh, the jar, usually that jar of vinegar is a little bit uh, better stuff. It's not. Well, it's canned. Yeah, it's canned, and it's not made with a machine. Just put it in there. How they how they how they make that? They just put run it on the machine. Yeah. You know, like a bag of chips. Yeah. And they just dump it all in there. Is and that by all, the way, that... <laughs> we seen a thing on chips last night. <laughs> Doritos are not good for you. Oh, Deborah. She Just can't have salt and hot water. Yeah. Yeah. Smell of it. Kick it outdoors. Yeah. Well, you know, you can steam it. Cabbage steamed with carrots and potatoes is really good on the grill. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah. You Reynolds put it wrap. in put it in Reynolds wrap and cook it, make a little boat. Yeah. yeah, put a little bit of water in it, you know, and uh, put it on about medium. Let it sit there and simmer all day long. Here's the magic, girls. Ooh. Yep. There's your dinner. There's your dinner. Italy. Can you see it? Yeah. It's shiny on that one leaf. Just on this one. More, more, more. <laughs> can you see it? I can see it's a little darker. Well, we'll fix it. I'll fix it. Yeah. <laughs> Cheryl Cabbage, it, it's not always good. Some it's And it depends on what kind of cabbage you get. I mean, there's I've seen cabbage that smells bad, really smells bad. And they say, well, there's nothing wrong with it. It ain't got any brown black spots or anything like that. But I don't like it like that either. I, li I like a light, I like cabbage, 
the consistency of the of the vegetable but i don't like the real strong stuff my german huh? can't probably use the make can hold my can of beef. in a large crop oh my <laughs> These three have it on there. Oh yeah, I see on the little yellow ones. I mean, uh, blue. It's on the blue. It's it? on the green. On the green. Oh. These three feathers have it. Oh, the good job, place. Deborah. Okay, thank you, Deborah. I can go on now. <laughs> Deborah said, "Good job." If Deborah says good job, then I'm okay. My mom used to always cook cabbage. Potatoes and cabbage? Potatoes and cabbage. And... Now, cabbage doesn't bother me, but um, uh, beans, any kind of beans bother me. No, I can eat green beans. But yeah. I can't eat the bean part of the bean, uh, like the cabbage. shellies. We call them shellies. Cabbage is, um, but uh, but cabbage doesn't seem to bother me. What is it? What's that, Susanna? What'd she say? You don't like a hot, hot cabbage. cabbage. Hot cabbage. <laughs> I've never had. I'm not. I'm not. I don't know if I've had that. I mean, I don't think. I mean, you're not talking about cooked cabbage. You're talking about hot sauce cabbage, right? I bet. I don't know if I've ever had it. Hot sauce cabbage? Mm -hmm. Chimichi. Susan Hill. Susan. I don't know. Chimichi. Just a copy of that picture for, for me. <laughs> Susan, I love you. She wants me to make her copy of everything. She does. And I do. <laughs> I do it for her. That's the problem. I do it. I do it for you. Oh, yeah. I see the shine now. It's got a sheen to it. Now, that was my new. Um, Nouveau, N-U-V-O, embellishment, mousse. And it's, it's they're um, metallic. And this is, you can use it as a rub and rub it on with your fingers. I used a stiff brush. And, and you have to clean your brush real good because if it dries on there, it'll ruin your brush. It's supposedly not water- Soluble, soluble because they talk about the uh this drying out and they said to put an oil pad on top of it and i'm going to do that as soon as i find my pads yeah, not uh, but um but i'm going to wash this brush real good it does stain the brush but i'm not going to that won't bother me i don't care if it stains it but you can use this as a with a stencil and use it like a texture paste but I'm using it as a rub for the uh, shiny parts of the bird. So let me show you. Let me put the lid back on this. So it won't dry out on me. So um, <clears throat> here is the bird in the book. And here is the bird on my paper i think i can put i think i need to put a little more of this uh, i got this this blue that i like 
it's a tropical type uh, turquoise blue green sea blue ocean blue and I really like it so I'm going to put a little bit more on this bird right there highlighting this bird a little bit Oh yeah, I'm liking that. Oh yeah. It's a little bit, just almost, I'm getting there. It is like almost icing on the cake right there. Let me get it. Let me get it. I don't know how, but I'm doing it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the Kool-Aid man right there. Now, let's see. And, and, I did have a, a toothpick. This is called Dragon Glaze. And I'm putting it in his eye. Putting it in his eye. Okay, I still like I think I'm about done with them. I think we've we've done we've hit we've hit the the main parts. Putting some dragon glaze on his hat pins what I'm calling them. So, there you go. I think we're done. The dragon glitter glaze in his eye is wet, but it will dry translucent and be glittery when we get done and on his and on his hat pins. So I think we're gonna call him done. Now Suzanne, Suzanne, honey, 
Suzanne. Oh, Suzanne. Would you like a copy of this one? Can I send you a copy of this one out of the book? Or do you want a copy of mine? This is the book. And this is mine. Okay, I have to wait for it to dry, so I'll do it tomorrow. Well, we did it, and I think we did a good job. I like it. Okay, let me take a picture of it. A pickle rabbit trail, Cheryl. <laughs> okay, got that. Now, we did do a glue page book earlier. I've got to pick this up so it'll dry. And this was our glue page. And I really like what we did. I do think I want to ink the edges, though, in a darker color. For some reason, I think it would look good with the... Uh, brown on the edge. To match this brown paper. So we did that. like that I like it I like it a lot okay you guys are cooking I'm glad I'm going to take a picture of this this was our glue page book love it we used five or six items we used uh, paint on the background, and I used a red with a little bit of white gesso, and it turned it pinky. And then we used some gold uh, embellished ball, embossed paper and some ephemera paper that was like a, a log book. And then we had these letters. And then we put a little bit of lace on the letters and added a word. So we just we just threw it together and there it is. And I love it. We also worked in our little glue medium glue book and we added a button. And we worked in our tiny glue book and we added another button in it. So I don't I haven't taken any pictures of our glue books. But I will. So that's kind of all. And then we worked in our tag book. And our tag book. Uh, we can go over it a little bit now. If you want. I'm going to move this book out of the way. I'm glad we did the peacock. Glad we did that. Uh, the tag book, you need to, if you want to be uh, join in with our tag uh, exchange, you need to make four tags. And they can be mixed media, three inches by six inches, or thereabout. Give or take an inch, give or take. Take whatever you need to take, but it's basically three by six mixed media. You can use napkins, you can use markers, you can use stencils, you can use torn paper, painting papers, 
you can use ephemera. This was um, a paper copy of a card. You can use an actual card. If you want to put a card on your on your tag, you can use a real tag. You use a real tag, a real card. Uh, there's no right or wrong. Mixed media is your media. This one has a tag on it, and I put a sticker on the back, and then I put to my friend. So one of you all will be receiving one of these. I painted the back side of the paper. It was just all white. And I did all kinds of leftover paint. Then I did a stencil. And then I stamped. I stamped on it. A couple of little stamps. And then I wrote my name. Simple. I, I thought it was simple. So uh, I made this tag book online on here with you guys. So if you want to go back for the past three or four videos, I have been working on this all along. And you can see the progress of how it started and how it's gotten to where it is now, nice and fluffy. It was just a book from the library that I got and repurposed. And I left the original binding on the book and I added some paper and made a mosaic, put paper on the spine just for looks and paper on the back for looks and made it look like that draw lines in the middle but it's the regular book right there that's the regular what it looks like from the bottom of the book okay Teresa <laughs> put some stickers on it and labeled my book I've been putting pockets in here from people uh, have sent me things uh, Janice Glines sent me this so I can put a tag in here when I get another tag made and it's it's made just like a library pocket is and i love it and it's, it fits right in here so uh i put a napkin down and made a corner tag uh janice janet young has i'm sorry janet nash has videos for the last two past two mondays she's done videos on corner tags uh corner pockets this pocket here is, is, is sandwiched in between these two pages, and you can put a tag in here. Now, I could take a tag in there, and I can take a tag on this side. See? So there's a tag. Um, she also made some other corner tags, uh, corner pockets uh, that I have in here, like this one. And I demoed it earlier tonight. If you want to go back to the beginning of the of the video, you can see me make this one and this one. This one I already had made up. It's made out of braille paper. This one's made out of music paper. So, um, but these pockets will hold tags as well. I'll get some tags over here and show you. Uh, <clears throat> I can put a tag in this one right there. There's there's three. There's one, one pocket. It's there. One, two, three. So you could put three tags right here in this corner pocket. You could do the same thing on these other. These others are the same way. Okay, they're just on different corners. And I demoed how to make these from one side to the other. It's real easy. And so these were in the back of the book. And I put these papers in so that you can see where the pockets are. So, you know, it's got, there's three pockets. So, uh, so I plan on using your tags. Uh, I'm going to put your tags in here and I will finish up some of these tags. I've got till the end of the month to finish my tags and I will probably send each of you one of my tags for sure. And, uh, and, and if I get, get a good response on the tags, you will receive four different tags back. Um, and then I'm going to keep one of your tags for in my tag book 
for permanent uh, for a permanency so all of the tags I receive will go in here so uh, it's going to be a lot of fun I'm excited to see what you all make and uh, here was a tag that I made and this one is four inches by six so it's a little different it was from packaging um, Janice sent me this again Janice Glines and uh, I, I decorated it online here so you can see me uh, work on tags throughout the month uh, I started two weeks ago so there there are tags involved in all of my videos so um, I used things that I had on hand this was a paper towel stickers I had the stickers this was bloom where you're planted. I just put it on blue paper, printed it out, and glued it down. This was a, a stamp that I have. It says, for the joy of the Lord is in your strength. And it was on this little piece of paper, dictionary paper, that I had in my stash. And I used it. These were some ephemera things that um, Teresa Church sent me. She has a uh, one of those cutters. Uh cutter bug things that she runs the paper through and the die cuts and she made me the flowers and the bees and then I put some washi tape on it that came in some happy mail from Deborah and I used some fluorescent or some sparkly sequins that I had in my stash I had the bow in my stash it came from my mother so as you can see you can make a tag with the things that you have on hand you just gather it up so it sticks into that little pocket so this is this is the tag book uh, I made this book from a, a novel and I took three or four pages I took three pages and glued them together then I ripped out a chapter it may not have been a chapter it may have been just 20 pages I don't know I just ripped out a bunch of papers then I glued three more pieces of paper together and then I ripped out some more pages of this book and then I glued three pages together and I did it all the way through to the to the front of the book so I have 10 pages left in this book and there's enough room in between in the spine to hold the bulky tags because most of the tags have a tassel so I wanted it to, I wanted that extra space so that I could put my tags in here and have a tag book and this is probably the thickest page because I've got these two bulky beads if these beads were hanging up front that's what I'll do if they were hanging out the top this book wouldn't be so bulky so there we go we'll leave them all outside from now on <laughs> So anyway, uh, the sky's the limit on what you can do with tags and how you can make a tag book. And so we will continue to probably work on this um, this book. I will probably put another, uh, this is a belly band. And I can put another belly band right there and make two belly bands. So I will probably be making some more, a few more pockets. I need a pocket here. And... Uh, so forth so there's just you know this was a piece of wall uh, border a border wallpaper from the border line and um, and I made a, a little side pocket for this tag uh, you know copy paper scrapbook paper wallpaper uh, any kind of scrap paper napkins painting papers from my desk uh, this was off of my desk and it just happened to be the right shades <laughs> so there it goes so you can make a tag book if you want or you can put your tag display your tags some way out some other way so uh, I'm just that's what I did so there's my tag book now that's all that's all that I've done tonight that's all that I've done. The only thing I can think of now is, if you want, I'll work on, on my little heart snippet. 
uh, I did send out uh, quite a few um, envelopes of this hook rug. And um, so I don't know if any of you are going to make something, but I took my hook rug and cut a heart out of it. And then I'm tying on snippets of ribbon, lace, yarn, scraps, fabric, odds and ends, ropes, string. Hi, Sharon. No, I didn't, but I'll look. I mailed my tags today. Yay! Good. Okay. Great, Sharon. I've got some tags coming from Australia, girls. Y'all better get busy. You got to the end of the month. Don't wait till the last minute. <laughs> Listen, I've given you all plenty of time. So let's get let's get busy on those tags and get them to me so I don't have to wait till the very last minute. Because I will be getting antsy wanting to get these in the mail to everybody. So all you have to do is mail me four tags. So get busy. If I'm up to it, Beth, uh, Teresa says, I have a die cut machine. I know you have a die cut machine. And then she says, if you're up to it, Beth, we love it when Beth claps. <laughs> I can say what's <laughs> it I will be mailing mine soon. And we'll be mailing them out. Thank you, Teresa. Teresa's going to be mailing hers out soon. She works, she's got three tags made. <laughs> I got a sneak preview of her tags. <laughs> so it's it's a it's a genuine genuine happiness. It's it's complete happiness. <laughs> no no fake. No fake happiness here. We got genuine happiness. So anyway, I'm going to work on my snippet thing and see what I've got left in my box to use. Oh, and Janet sent me some new snippets. I laid it over here to the side because it was in my way. <laughs> Let me put my, my markers up. Let's find Janet's snippets. Ooh, she's got snippets. She sent me some fabric all the way from England. Let's see where I, where I put them. I think they're right here. Put my embroidery up. Clean my desk off. I've got some more... Uh, Things for my tag book. And here's my snippets from Janet. Here's my snippets from Janet. So let's just see what she brought. See what we can do with all of hers. And I still have buttons and uh, sequins and beads to put on mine. Uh, when I get finished with the tying part, I'm going to sew. After I after I tie everything on, I'll give it a haircut. I'll probably give it a haircut somehow. And um, then I'm going to sew on by hand all of these little doodads. But Janet sent me some uh, fabric snippets. And I'm going to use them all on my, on my, on my heart. So uh, very nice. And I might be able to use some of these with my beads. If they're not long enough to tie on, what I will do is I can take a piece of fabric. And I can still put it on my, in my hook rug. And what I'll do is I'll go in and then I'll go back, push it back through. 
And if I don't have enough to tie it in a knot, then I can put the two ends together like this and I can sew a bead on it. So let's just do that. Since I'm right here, let's just do that. Let me get some, I don't want to use orange. I would like to use um, something that matches. Like this or something. So I will get a needle and thread. And this is embroidery thread. And I'm just going to use one of my needles. Try to use a, a long needle. I got a long needle with a kind of a big eye, but it's a, this is the longest needle I have, and they told me it was for doll making. But I like it because it's thin, and I like it because it will go through a hole of a button or a bead. It's got a pretty, it's pretty thin. And that's the only reason why I like what why I'm using it. So anyway, I've got some thread here. And I'm going to tie a knot on the end. Just like you're sewing. And I'm going to take my two snippets together right there. And I'm going to sew them together. And if I have a bead or a button. <clears throat> I can use one of those. So here's my my little goodie bag <laughs> of things that I've collected that I thought would look good on the heart. I collected them from my button department, from the bead department, the sequence department, and I've got some bling. <laughs> now these are glue with glue bags. So these will go on at the very end and they will and now we'll cut them apart with glue and glue them on uh, where they need to go. But I think it would be best to do that one at last. So anyway, I've got my um, my snippet and I'm going to get a I think I'll get a bead. And see if it'll go through. And it will. So I'm sewing a bead on here. And if I wanted to, I could put a bead on the other side. Which might not be a bad idea. It might not be a bad idea to put one on the other side too. So I'll do it on both sides. And I'm just going to push the, the needle through back and forth a couple of times. And then I will tie another knot. And I will be done. And you just have to make sure your thread doesn't get hooked onto any other snippets laying around next to it. And that's about it. So I'm just going to... Uh, Secure this end of the thread so that when I cut it off, it won't come unraveled. And and it'll be fine. I think it'll be just fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and put another knot in the end of my thread for the next piece. And I am going to move my paints out of the way a little bit. So I, I used a piece of fabric that uh, required a bead or a button.
No, they don't. <laughs> uh, Abby will get in the pool if I make her. She will reluctantly get down on the first step, and then I get her, and I swim her around. And then I go to the end of the pool, and I let her swim out so that she knows where the steps are. And that's the main reason why I wanted Abby to know about the pool so that if she were to accidentally fall in the pool, she wouldn't panic. She would know to swim out. Right. So Nora has been in the pool all oh, two or three times maybe. And she's a different, uh, a different uh, case. Um, she does not like to be held at all whether we're inside or outside. She will not let me hug on her and love on her. She will not come to me. But if I'm laying in the bed and I'm watching TV and I'm eating crackers, she'll come and sit and look at me. So I will give, I'll make her sit and I'll give her a cookie, give her a cracker. She will take her cracker and go to the end of the bed and lay down and chew and munch on her, her cookie. And she's very polite and she's, it's, she does a great job and she looks cool. And then I'll say, Nora, come. And I have, of course, I'm within three feet of her, right? From the bed, top of the bed to the bottom of the bed. And I'll say, Nora, come. And I hand out a cookie or a cracker. And she will get up and come to me and get the cracker. She will sit there at the bottom of the bed to eat it. Now, I get up off the bed and I go to the doorway. Just the doorway of the bedroom. Not the outside the doorway. Inside the door. And I'll say, Nora, come. And she'll jump down off the bed, look at me, and walk around to the other side of the bed away from me. She will not come to me with a cookie in my hand. If I'm in the dining room and I say, Nora, come for her food, she will turn around and walk down the hallway to the bedroom and hide. So I'm working with her and I'm trying very hard to figure out why she won't come. And I'm thinking that maybe somebody scolded her from her previous owner, I'm thinking something's happened for her not to want to come to me. And uh, we are happy. We've never hit her or harmed her or all we've done is loved on her and feed her and, and take good care of her. And uh, so, so I can't figure out why she won't come. So I'm, I'm using better treats and I'm using, um, comfortable zones like on the bed she because when we first got her she wouldn't come into the bedroom she'd go back into the living room and sit down so she wasn't allowed in the rest of the house wherever she lived it was strict and so i finally after about two weeks got her coming into the bedroom and she'd sleep on the floor and she still will get down off the bed and sleep on the floor but most of the time she's up in the bed now Well, I'm thinking not necessarily abused, but not necessarily trained in the proper way. You know, there's a right way and a wrong way to treat and to reward a dog. And if you don't reward the dog in a nice way, they, they're, it's going to be abuse. It's kind of like an abuse, you know, and they're, and they're not going to like it and they're not going to come to you. You know, when we're outside, she will not come to me. But here's here's another thing that she does. And I've allowed it. So I'm I'm a I don't think I'm a bad mother, but I do allow this. OK, I'm up at night. OK, so it doesn't bother me. So she gets up at four or five o'clock and she wants to go out. She'll come over and touch me with her nose. Like, I want to go out. <laughs> Okay, so I get up and I let her go out. She will stay out for an hour in the backyard 
no joke. She will stay out forever. She loves running in the backyard, especially when it's nice and cool. So she doesn't bark very much. So she doesn't bark to come back in. She scratches. So it doesn't hurt the door because it's a metal door, but she's not afraid of pushing a door either so i always don't i don't latch the door all the way so that she can push it open so she pushes the door open and she comes into the house running like a football player it's hilarious and she'll come back to the bedroom and and she'll stand in the doorway and look at me and i go okay you've come in I need to go and shut the door because you left it open. You know, I haven't got her to, I haven't, I need to train her to shut the door, but I don't see how I can possibly train her to shut the door when she won't come to me. So I'm stuck. So anyway, I get up to go close the door and she runs back out like a game, which is great. It's cute. And it's, and it doesn't hurt a thing that she does this. But she'll do it like three times before I can get her in and shut the door. So, and I mean, we're talking two hours. We're not talking no five minutes. It's like, you know, I know I'm not ready. I'm not finished running. And out she goes. And she runs from one side of the yard to the other side, to the front, to the back. She runs and frolics in the yard. It's amazing. It's more, It's a beautiful sight to see a happy dog running around in the yard. She she digs out from under the fence and she'll come to the front door. <laughs> like, here I am. She doesn't run away. She's having fun. She's just having fun. <laughs> so I never scold her. I never scold her. Um, she was chewing on the wood legs of the of the furniture in the dining room and I sprayed hairspray on it. She don't like to taste the hairspray. It's clear. You can't see it. It's on the wood. No problem. Spray some hairspray on it. She was chewing on the corner of a couch. She, she was puppy when I first got her. She was still teething. And, and, of course, that was in February. And so I sprayed hairspray on the corner of the couch. She has never touched it since. So she's not bad. She's not. She's good. But she will not come to me. <laughs> so I don't know what to do with her. And she's beautiful. Oh, God, she is so beautiful. Okay. He would just sit and look at you. And then, and then turn around and walk the other way, Kendra. Oh, yes. Stubborn. She's very. And, I, of course, I wanted a little dog. When I got her, she was only about 20 pounds. And she told me she was a year old. So she should be finished growing, right? Uh -uh. She weighs 50 pounds now. <laughs> oh, she, she, and now, now Joe will whistle and he'll say, come on, get in here. Come on, get in here. And she will come to Joe, but she will not come to me. And it might be a female male thing. So uh, we're still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I got any baby pictures. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, she's something else. But she is, you can't see her. She's so black. She's so black. This is Nora. You can't even see her face. She's so black. She's beautiful. She's gorgeous. You got an overcast. Um, let me try this. <sighs> nah, it's the light from the from the fan. But she is beautiful. She's a beautiful dog. And and she will let she will come up to me and let me rub on her ears. 
she's affectionate. She is, but, but she will not come. She will not come. And this is the way she sleeps. She doesn't feel very, she doesn't look very ladylike when she sleeps. Yep, that's the way she sleeps. It's her head cocked back to the side and her, and her legs are wide open. So she's got a lot of uh, German Shepherd in her. Um, uh, and here she's asleep with Abby. Abby's got white, a lot of white. Um, uh, Abby's over here. Nora has a tint of brown in the light. It looks brown on her black fur. And she's got nappy fur like, um, um, chow. She's got half of a black tongue like chow. Her, her fur is like velvet. When you pet her, you don't want to stop petting Nora. It's, 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 it's wonderful to pet. Yep. So, uh, anyway, uh, when she needs a bath or something, it takes both of us to uh, <laughs> to to do it. Let's see. Let me see all photos. Photos. Here we go. Let's try this one. They were all my puppies. But she is coal black. She has white on her toes. And for me to hug on her, it's like pulling teeth. She won't let me love on her. <laughs> and of course, Abby, she wants me to hold her. She wants to be right behind me. She, she'd sit right behind me if she could. And we gave her a bath. We had to give her a bath. And Lord Almighty, you might as well hang on to your hat. Trying to give her a bath is, is hard. But you know what? When we got done with her, we wrapped her up in this towel. And I gave Babby a bath and wrapped her up in a towel, put her beside her. And she didn't move a muscle. So it freaks me out. The, she, she, she'll go from one extreme to the other. You know, you just never know what's going to happen. <laughs> and you just can't help but love on her. And that's what we do. But she's a big dog. She looks like a, a she looks like a German Shepherd. So, uh, but that's our lovely Nora. Nora and Abby, and they've been really good for each other. Um, Nora is the new new little big sister, and she is she she could care less what Abby does. <laughs> she just ignores Abby. Abby uh, will nip at her and like get back, get back. This is my area, and she'll just come right in and sit down anyway. She don't she don't pay no mind to Abby. And they kind of do the sequence, sequen, they synchronize their, their actions. If they're laying together, they're always laying with their feet the right, right same direction. So that's where we stay on the bed. And Abby likes her corner and Nora could care less where she stays. She, she'll go anywhere. But uh, 
of course we're you know we're we're keeping her we're not giving her back or anything i i had a problem when we first got her because of her size and i said i wanted a small dog and i said but we really like her <laughs> she's so pretty she's handsome and she's a tomboy she's a tomboy and you know what's really funny her belly has a natural cowlick and that cowlick is right in the middle of her belly and it, there's a point like an ice cream cone point in the middle of her belly and it looks like she's a boy <laughs> it's got that little tip of her hair going together and she looks like a little boy <laughs> But she's a girl. <laughs> it's she's not a boy. She's a girl. <laughs> but but I think she's a tomboy. The way she runs in the yard and digs. The way she digs out. But she she just digs out for fun. It's not for meanness. It's just for fun. It's like look what I can do. <laughs> Yeah, Abby likes the corner of the bed, or she'll get right in the right behind my knees. Abby likes it by, right behind my knees. I don't know if I have any pictures of her when we first got her to compare prices, uh, sizes. She's like. Nora's saying, I'm bored, and Abby's going, what is she going to do next? <laughs> Abby's like, I don't know about you. I don't know about you. You're in my territory. But, you know, Abby um, runs out the door behind her all the time now, and she runs out in the yard, and she'll run halfway down the yard even, out into the yard, where before she all she did was go out, pee, and come right back in. And now she's going out and running a little bit with, with Nora. So she's been really good for, Nora has been really good for Abby and keeping her active. Because Abby's 14. She's going to be 15. You can't even see either one of them here. They're just two black dogs. Two black dogs. Let me see if I can't go back and see some dog pictures when we first got her. Yeah, I think she was little here. This was when we first got her. But she's got like a little heart on her chest. And she's got white tips on her feet. That she is. She's a sweet dog. And so we just have to... We just accept her for what she is. Now, see, they look more the right same size. Nora is about five pounds heavier than Abby there. She's a bigger dog, but she's stockier. She's solid. She's like a brick. She's like a brick house. And her tail wags. <laughs> you should see her tail wag. Oh, it wags. And it, it beats. It's like thunder. Her tail wags. And she be, you could hear her tail hit the floor. <laughs> oh, really? Well, 20 years? That's a long time. But Abby is starting. You can start to see Abby... Um, age i can see it in her eyes and her weight and even though she eats better now that that i they're together you know they're playing together now and she eats better with Nora around having another dog around <clears throat> and uh uh but they play in the yard together and Nora, of course Nora is twice as big she can run faster than abby but abby is awful fast Abby has always been a fast runner. She sure has. 
there's Joe. <laughs> and our that's our backyard. So we've got a big yard. We've got a nice big yard. I think I might have another movie in here. Let's see if I can find it. <clears throat> this is a picture of my pool. And the red chip, the redwood, uh, Nora gets up under that bush and lays there in that, in that wood, red wood stuff. And she feels like she's hiding. She, 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 she thinks that nobody can see her under that tree, <laughs> under that bush. <laughs> it's hilarious. But now these are back when we first got her. And that's how small she was when we first got her. And she's twice that big now. Well, at least 20 pounds more. They're both asleep there. <clears throat> and this is this was kind of this was kind of normal too for them, their feet to touch when they slept. But she looks twice as big as Abby there. But this was one of the first ones when we first got her. She's just a bigger dog. She's a horse. <laughs> I dress them up alike. They're sisters. <laughs> I should have. I should paint that one. That's the one that uh, that. Um, Mary painted Abby. I think that's the picture she used. I think that's the picture she used. Because look at here. I think that's the picture. Because it's got this little wild hair there. And this one here. Yeah, I think that's the picture she used. <clears throat> and see her laying down on the ground? She lays on her belly like that with her feet out. That's the only way she lays down. She will not lay down any other way. She puts her feet out right behind her. That's what she does on the bed too. And I don't know if it's uncomfortable for her to lay any other way, but that's the only way she lays down. Unless she's on her back <laughs> with her legs out and up. But you see her her belly. You can see it looks like a little boy. You see her. You see her little thing. <laughs> she looks like a little boy. <laughs> Look at her standing up there. She's showing off. Now she's going to lay down again. She's going to lay down in the, the red uh, mulch. You can see she's been rolling in something. She got a bath that day, I think. And you can see the black on her tongue. But 
but she lays down on the ground and she'll dig it up and lay down in it like a cool spot. She finds a cool spot when she's been running. Yep, it's a chow mix for sure. But she's something else, buddy, I tell you. <laughs> That's our girl. She loves the backyard. And I'm glad. I'm happy that she loves the backyard. And I'm glad she likes to stay by herself. Because I don't have another dog to go with her. And then it stops. <laughs> that was the video. But that's a pretty good size backyard. I mean, you know, any dog would love enjoy that dog. She's back there in the back running around like a crazy guy. She take oh she was taking a pine cone and throwing it up in the air. Here she goes. Now, if that isn't if that isn't a sign of a happy dog, I don't know what is. You can't. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Uh oh. <laughs> I better write night. Good night. There's your bedtime story. <laughs> so I'm going to say goodnight. It's time. <laughs> okay, you can hear me now. Okay. But anyway, that's, that's all. I got to frame this guy yet. So, I think it's time to quit. My back hurts. So, um, so anyway, we, uh, we played a little bit with our snippets and we painted, so we'll do some more Thursday and, um, uh, see what we can get back into and do it again. That's all I know to do. I want to try to get through some of these birds and then maybe we can I'll get another book out and do something in it one day. I'd like to get one of these sketches out. This has got sketch paper in it. So we could get we could get one of these out and do it. I have to figure out if I paint on this or is it just the sketch? Because it's just copy paper. I think I'm supposed to sketch it out on my mixed media paper, I would think. But um, I'd like to do one of these. So we, maybe we could put one of the birds <laughs> in the scenery of this. Wouldn't that be cool? You know, do a combo. Double up some on some of my pictures. So I will see you guys Thursday. And um, Becky will be on tomorrow night. And then Lisa and, and uh, Tanya will be on Thursday morning sometime. And uh, if you want to watch uh, Rebecca Creates, she streams on Monday through Fridays at 10 o'clock a.m. Every, every day. I try to catch her. And she and I do a lot of the same stuff. So if you uh, want to try to catch her, I ought to see if I can find her 
link and give you a link. Um, I really like watching her. Let's see if I can find her. Rebecca Creations, maybe. No, that's not her. Let me go to my subscriptions. And let me try looking her up there. It's called Rebecca Create with Becca. It's her link. And let me do a share button. Copy. And go back to my video. <laughs> Gosh, this is so confusing sometimes. I'm putting in a link to create with Becca. So if you all want to check her out, she she is really cute. She does a lot of cats. Uh, she likes cats and stuff. And uh, she does glue books. And she's got a cat book that she's been working on. And so she does a lot of stuff like I do. And she likes to create with uh, magazines and beads and mixed media like I like we do. So I highly I she, I recommend her. She's she's good to watch. She's a good girl. So that's all I'm going to do tonight. And I'll see you guys Thursday. I'll be back. So I hope this uh, all this weather is uh, fizzling out now. I haven't I haven't watched it. So I need to go watch the weather channel. So hopefully uh, uh, people are out of the danger zone of it now. So, okay, guys. Good night.